Now he, oh, you rascal, with the belly spun pie. And listen to this tale of old with the heroes won't be high. Hey, he's a master of concealment and an adept of disguise. Which he uses when he's sick and fast, the husband wants to lie. He's slain many a villain, be a dragon, football wizard. He's looted and chest of all the best of treasures he could find. He's the only champion of adventure for the passion. And he sings this song as he comes along with a fiddle and a pie. The grass is green, the air is clean, a sweet lass by my side. The angel pod is looking so as we surround the behind. The world is full of monsters while the day here at the time. So live your rocks, propose it to some drunken friends of mine. A hero journey far and wide, but it riches gold and magic. For he never found a true love song, and it made him sad and tired. It was ever funny. And I played a fair from over there with a bow and she was mine. She appalled the judge profusely, said she thought he was a dwarf. And she carried him to the nearest dip, for she nursed him back to die. Well, it fell in love directly, and she married him that night. So the half day now, they can't be up as long as not their time. The grass is green, the air is clean, the sweet lass by my side. There ain't nobody looking so I squeeze her up behind. Hey, the world is full of monsters while we're here at the side. So lift your rose, rose and toast to the drunken friends of mine. With the belly spun pie, and listen to this tale of old with the heroes won't be high. Hey, the master of concealment and an adept of disguise. Which he uses when he's sick and fast, the husband wants to lie. He's slain many a villain, be a dragon, football wizard. He's looted and chest of all the best of treasures he could find. He's the only champion of adventure, war and passion. And he sings this song as he comes along with a fiddle and a pie. The grass is green, the air is clean, a sweet lass by my side. The angel pond is looking so as we surround the behind. The world is full of monsters while we're the here at the time. So lift your rocks, propose and toast to the drunken friends of mine. A hero journey far and wide, but it riches gold and magic. But he never found a true love song, and it made him sad and tired. And I played a fair from over there with a bow when she was mine. She appalled the judge profusely, said she thought he was a dwarf. And she carried him to the nearest dip, but she nursed him back to die. Well, it fell in love directly, and she married him that night. So the half day now, they can't be up as long as not their time. The grass is green, the air is clean, the sweet lass by my side. The rain's so far, they look 
Oh, are we live? Oh, look, we're I'm live. assuming that we're live. <laughs> I, might, I think the speaker's cut out for poor Steve, who was trying to give me a count in. <laughs> you, you lost it already. We're live! <laughs> Hello, everyone! Um, welcome to High totally Rollers. Totally professional. A, a totally professional. Always going to be a long yeah. three hours. Very, what are you saying? You don't Nothing. enjoy our wonderful company, Nothing especially nice. this... Anyway, <laughs> welcome to High Rollers, uh, the, our D&D stream every Sunday here on the Yogscast Twitch channel. I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Humes. Welcome, welcome. And with me I have our wonderful cast of players. We're missing one, but we have gained another in the form of a guest. But this week we have our regulars of Katie. Hi. We have Matt. Hello. We have Kim. You are. Right. And we don't have Chris Trot this week. Instead, Got we have prick. the lovely calf of Substitute. the calf car. I can't believe you let this guy in. Oh, I can. I can. Just to wind you up. Why do you think I've sat next to you as well? What a loser. Don't do it, Don't do it, guys. It's going to come out. I'm really sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm very sorry for this and for what, what is about to happen. For our next exit. You're going to die. You're going to get you're this. Right, you're right, Lovin. Every time you speak in that accent, as Juto, you're going to take damage. Wow. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> hey, Korak, you bastard! One, one point of damage, keep going. It's gonna mount up. Oh, so, mean. welcome. A couple of quick announcements before we get underway. Um, <laughs> good. A um, couple of quick announcements. So, next week we will not be here because. Um, both Katie and Trot will be at Insomnia Scotland, so we're going to be two players down. So we figured it was better to just have a nice, quick, quick break for the rest of us. Yay, um, so going we, yay, going home! Yay, going back to the motherland. Back to the motherland. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so Insomnia Scotland. So if you're going to that, you can see Trot and Katie there, um, and those girls will be there. We won't be there next week. The following week, you will still be in Scotland, so we won't have Katie there the following week Sorry. either. Um, so we are going to, it might be a bit jingly jangly about what we're doing in game and what's going on with certain in-game events. Um, so that's a couple of things. Other one is Martin has just started doing a new series which is going to feature both Kaf and I initially. It's and so I good. Kim is going to so be joining good. as well. Uh, who are we, Kaf? We are going to be the Couch Potatoes. Yeah, Couch Potatoes. It's got a lovely the intro jingle. intro animation is fantastic. Have you heard the song as well? The jingle. Not the song, no. Oh, do you, have you done yours? Yeah. He, do you want to do it? He showed me the animation. I haven't, I haven't done the song. I'm singing the song tomorrow. Oh, you're singing the song tomorrow. But he showed me what it's like. Okay. Um, but I, it's we'll, like, we'll, it's shoes off, couch style. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's so and, good. And I think the thing is as well, is like, you know, Martin said, I know he said it in the video I did with him, it's very heavily inspired by folks like the Game Grumps, yeah. like, because we love their content, we love what they do, we think they're great guys, and it just inspired a lot of us to do more couch gaming. So it works really well. I've got really couch well. games coming out too. You got couch games yeah, coming out. We you got did Mario, Mario Kart. Kart. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, got, yeah, us three yeah. and uh, Duncan. Duncan. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that was very loud. Well. Did he rage? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. He flat out called call me a bitch. Oh. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, I you think it fire. was was it you and Caff or you and Duncan and like properly shouting, shouting. <laughs> <laughs> like, get out guy and we could hear them all in the main office. We played it we played amazing. at Kim's house. Well some some of you guys played at Kim's when we went over for board games. And oh, yeah. everyone everyone got up and went into the kitchen when the game ended and Matt just sat there 
staring at the TV <laughs> at his losing screen. Yeah. Just yeah. like with this face of For anger. reference, oh, I won that match so well that I literally had time to go up and answer the door and let other people in. And he was still racing. Yeah. She was like, oh, can someone get the door? Never mind, I won. Put her controller down and went out. And Matt's sitting there like twitching. It was baby park, alright? <laughs> Can't touch me. Can't touch me. Can't touch me. Anyway, before we kick off a full-scale civil war here in, in Grand America, <laughs> Um, that, that would hurt. Other yeah. couple of things. You have Trot is your new Pokemon trainer on your channel from tomorrow. He's savage. He's savage and hilarious. He's a He's savage man. Um, so very funny couple of episodes of that starting on Kim's channel tomorrow as well. Mm -hmm. And then the last quick thing is starting May 8th, um, we will be moving to Saturdays. We, Zoe, bless her soul, and Thank all you, praise Zoe. to Zoe, um, has very kindly swapped uh, uh, slots with us for the weekend streams. So from May 8th until the end of June, we will be on Saturdays. Um, just temporarily while we do some some uh, live personal stuff is happening and everything else. So yeah, that's a very quick thing. We will keep reminding you about that and it will we'll constantly keep putting it so people don't forget. Um, and yeah, go give Zoe a lot of love. I know that she's she's been having a tough time lately as well, so go give her a nice big hug on Twitter and stuff like that as well yeah. um, and everything else. So without further ado, shall we enter the world of Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, oh, I, I, should probably, yes. I should probably also mention I do currently hate Trot because he went to dinner with Chris Perkins, the Wizard of the Coast DM, who then paid for his dinner, as Katie told me today. <laughs> he told I'm, me to report that back to you, yeah, yeah, just I, to maximise the jealousy. Yeah, but yeah, please direct any anger towards Cam and not Alora. <laughs> <laughs> don't shoot oh, no. the messenger. Don't, don't worry. shoot the messenger. He's still unlucky. Not going to forget that next oh, time. Oh, time yeah. You're even more unlucky <laughs> now. Six times I get to re-roll. So. Um, well, last thing we left things, so Kaf, did you see last week's stream? Do you know I did, events? yeah. Okay, good. You took a previously on, though. Let's go for it. Previously on. So, um, the last week, the, the party continued their investigations in the capital city of Talis Val, as well as uh, inquire furthermore about Cam's performance for the Guild of Masons at something called the Feast of Stone. The party, first of all, uh, procured some uh, new garments, which are being currently made for them, <laughs> by a man named Enoran. Enoran Swiftwind of the Unicorn's Patch. Uh, who was a, a tad Gilmore inspired, but also mainly inspired by that guy from Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, points to those of you who picked up on that one. Um, they procured some, some custom garments that they were going to wear, uh, and then they started to investigate further. You went and saw the, the government, uh, uh, Elora, sorry, went to see the government building to arrange an appointment to see Korak and the Guildmasters about uh, the ongoing relationships with the elves and finding all the spies. You also discovered that your father's childhood friend and a man that had taught you a lot about stuff, uh, Athelant, had gone to pursue a lead about some elven spies but has not yet returned. After that, the group went and found out what was going on with Cam and this performance, in which they discovered that Cam has no idea what he's doing and is terrified of performing and doesn't have anything planned. Um, and so a hastily made <laughs> plan was made, um, and there is uh, this kind of ongoing thing of what's going to happen with that. Trelamar has promised him it will be a performance no one will ever forget, um, which I love. I can't wait. <laughs> but that's can't just been left completely open. <laughs> um, so that was what happened. And then the party spent the remainder of their time in the city investigating three missing tieflings, um, all of which seem to have known each other and were looking at starting a business but have all gone missing over several over the course of around about a week, uh, several days in between each one. And that's pretty much where we left things off. The last thing that you had discovered was that there was a connection to two things. You found two leads. One of which was to a dark elf, a drow called uh, Xandar, uh, who Trelamar knew, who had been producing a, uh, a poison, a sleep poison, oh. which had been used to kidnap these tieflings. Um, the connection's quite weak. Trelamar just knew of him. He wasn't somebody that you were quite intimate with. He was just a guy that you knew who was a, an alchemist and knew his way around poisons. Um, but now he seems to be cropped up and is operating in the city for reasons unknown. The other lead that you found was that there was some connection to something called the Black Valley Brewery. Um, you found evidence of their bottles at the various residences. You discovered that on the day that Shane went missing, they had restocked the Duck and Porter, which is the tavern where he had worked. And you figured that that might be somehow involved. We're gonna skip a little bit of time, just because 
Uh, what ha after you make this resolution, you discuss about your next steps, and Cam reveals that he needs to rehearse. He needs to focus on this planning for this performance. It's quite important, and he basically, in true Cam style, just leaves you to do all the hard work to go off and rehearse. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm not going to be playing Cam because I don't want to screw that up. <laughs> so, uh, so Cam has gone off to do his rehearsing, and you have agreed to look into something called the Black Valley Brewery. Um, you guys make your way there, you know where it is, you've been given uh, instructions and directions on where to find it, um, and you travel to the Dawn Square, I uh, know, sorry, the Artisan's Rest, which is a district you've, in Talis Valley you've not actually visited before. It seems to be very middle class, the housing and the buildings and the shops here are well looked after, well kept, but this isn't as rich as Dawn Square. There isn't gold, there isn't statues, there isn't gold trimmings on, you know, fancy ironwork and things like that. These are just sturdy, good stone buildings, nice houses, and little parks. You can see dotted around the place there are areas of green here and there, um, and it's very peaceful and very lovely. You make your way down several streets, and you see the Black Valley Brewery ahead of you. Uh, it's a large wooden building. It looks like it might actually be a part tavern itself. It seems to have a split floor. Um, there is no rooms attached to it like a normal inn, but it does seem to have some sort of bar or tavern aspect. Uh, it's currently doors and shutters are closed. But you do happen to see a rather strange creature, a strange little man. A pink-haired gnome <laughs> who appears to be watching the tavern very closely from a distance. Um, he seems to be watching it from a nearby park, which is uh, a number of benches, and you can see him furiously writing notes and keeping a keen eye on the front of the tavern itself. Loban, Loban Trogdor, gnome, <laughs> gnome sage. Burning in the countryside. Um, you have been monitoring the Black Valley mm -hmm. after investigating your own uh, your theft, your, your the theft of your precious notes. Yes. Um, and you have been keeping a close eye on this brewery because you've found these connections um, that lead you to believe that there are the thieves that took it are are there. Mm -hmm. um, what you have noticed is you've kind of spent a better part of the last day. You kind of go between here and a, and a tavern that you're staying at, and you just keep an eye on it. You're staying nearby where you can keep an eye. You notice that it seems to be closed during the day, but certain individuals are being let in. You see they seem to have an exchange at the door and then the individuals are let in, whereas others who come along are turned away. At night time it is opened up and it seems to operate as a normal bar, but you have noticed that there is this strange occurrence where... So I'm just making notes about this. And you've been like keeping yeah. notes and like tracking who goes when. Um, the only thing that you've really been able to justify so far is that the door is opened um, they seem to present something inside, like they either hand something or they put their hand through the door and then they are let in mm -hmm. and that seems to be some sort of trigger to allow them entry. Okay. Um, what you do notice is you've kind of been monitoring the city, you've been people watching um, and generally you see the normal residents of Talis Val, well dressed merchants or workers going about their business and then you see three very strange looking <laughs> folks who are approaching and seem to be as interested in the brewery as you are. Um, you see a blue skinned uh, elf <laughs> wearing very outdoorsy looking clothing, a yep. bow slung over a shoulder. Um, you see a drow, a dark elf, something a, very, a huge rarity these days. You've probably maybe only encountered one or two in your lifetime. Okay. Um, he's wearing a long coat. He has a small purple dragon curled up on his neck and his shoulder next to him um, and seems to have a very dour, serious look about his face. And then next to them, even more strangely, is a young tiefling. Probably, uh, you can't quite judge her age, but she does have kind of roundish, childlike features, but she's quite tall, um, and who appears to be wearing very traditional looking garb. Um, and the three of them are approaching, and you can see that they are also keeping an eye on this tavern, and you think maybe they might be involved, maybe because the people that have been going to and from have seemed quite different to the usual citizens okay. as well. So it's like piqued my interest, but I'm just kind of like You're keeping an eye on it yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So, the three of you. What would you like to do? <laughs> that. He has really bright hair. <laughs> it's very odd. Is that unusual? You d you've not seen hair quite as vibrant, perhaps. The, <laughs> the only one who has hair of that colour previously has been you. You also remember that the gnome officer, Merrick, he had blue, pale blue hair that was pushed back. It does seem to be a common trait amongst a certain type of gnomes to have this kind of brightly <laughs> coloured hair. I know nothing of this race, so I could not comment. I, I just like the colour, so yeah, okay. 
as you can see, the, the Black Valley Brewer itself, um, the windows and doors are all shuttered. Uh, it's got a thing, you can just see the sign hanging outside, which seems to show a black like orchard, like an oak tree, um, which kind of, and then in white writing, just Black Valley Brewery, just swinging gently. Um, there doesn't appear to be any signs of movement or anything like that around. Um, and yeah, what do you guys want to do? Do you wish to approach? So, do we see anyone else that might be looking at the brewery, or is it just Give me a perception check. 16. 19. It's 19, 16. Let's see if Trell wants to make it. Yeah, we're not. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess that wasn't very good. Uh, why, why have I gone mad and can't see anything? Oh, yeah. Uh, 11. 11. Um, you, you two, Elora and Juto, as you're watching, um, you kind of, you kind of slow the group. You hang back a little bit. You keep your eyes open. You look around. Um, there doesn't seem to be anybody uh, attempting to like watch the tavern. But after a few moments, you do notice um, a, a a pair of uh, two humans, uh, male and female, walk up to the the front of the door. You can see, you watch as they knock on it. There seems to be a hushed discussion, like the door opens a creak. There is a discussion. The door is open slightly. One of them puts puts their arm through the door, seems to pass something or hand something, you're not quite sure. Um, the door then opens fully. They're led inside, and it's shut again. And this seems to be the similar behavior to what you've seen previously. So what time is it in game? At the moment, it's quite early morning. So it's still about 11 a.m. Um, so you've kind of, you've been watching it this morning. You went and got some food, came back, mm -hmm. and you've been taking notes. You've not quite been sure how to approach it up until this point. Yeah. You know that it's connected somehow, but you're not quite sure how or why, and you're not sure about the next step that you want to take. Yes, as in, okay. as in That's fine. you know. You're, you're more of a scholarly man. You, you're a magician. You know your thing. You know things, but you are a scholar. You're not used to a lot of skullduggery, shall we say? <laughs> <coughs> so, gang, what are you thinking? What are your thoughts? He seems to be taking a lot of notes over there. <laughs> Mumbling to myself a little bit. You, you can hear this faint mumbling. Seems quite a few other people avoid him. Like a lot of people, kind of cast him a suspicious glance and walk away or keep their distance because he does occasionally bark things to himself, like, <laughs> <laughs> and kind of like say something out loud that he doesn't mean to. <laughs> that that exact, exact sort of thing. Trelamar, he looks positively insane. I think it's probably best if we. Avoid this pink head lunatic. At least for now. I've seen this kind of thing before. Perhaps he's a beggar. Should we should we leave him a coin? <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 no our, our, our gold is our own. All right. We've worked hard for this gold. Oh, I, did, I definitely didn't think of gold. No. <laughs> I don't think we have anything smaller, do we? We do. I do. Yeah. You got like silvers and coppers. Got silvers and, and coppers. Let me have a look <laughs> at the finances. <laughs> the books, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Laura pulls out a heavy tone. <laughs> uh, Taxes filed I have, off. I have four loose silver. If you want to offer this gentleman. There appears to be people entering the brewery. However, they are presenting some kind of sign or writ. You don't know. You couldn't see what it exactly was. They just put their arm through the door and offered yeah. something. Do you it think looks like they're putting their arm on their through arm. to... Yeah, and who was the last person we saw with a brand exactly. on their arm that wasn't Cam? Yeah. I mean, Mr. Human. <laughs> it's worrying. Role playing. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I, like, walk around the brewery? Like, kind of see... Yeah, you know, absolutely. Kind of walk can. around and see how you, big it is and see if there's any other entrances or exits. Yeah, so you take a brief kind of scout. Juto kind of slips off. Are you trying to be stealthy? Or are you trying to go unnoticed? Or um, are you just kind of... Casually just casually perusing. To, okay. In that case, can you just give me a quick um, either deception or perform check. I'm guessing they're both going to be the same for you. 
Because you're trying to keep this aloof of like pretending you're not here. Natural to. 20. Whoa. <laughs> despite yeah, nice. being. I'm totally going to die today. Despite standing out as a tiefling, you blend into the crowd. You just act and walk around pretending as if you're taking in the sight, but you actually scout the building in its entirety. Um, you, there are a couple of things you notice. First of all, it's, it's definitely tier. Uh, it has a second floor, um, possibly some sort of balcony. You can see through windows um, that have been left open on the other side. There seems to be another kind of a balcony full of tables and chairs upstairs. Um, there are there is the only other entrance seems to be a, uh, a basement, like a cellar entrance, uh, but it doesn't actually have any openings from the outside. It has to be open from the inside and out. Uh, but there is definitely something which seems to lead into, it, suggesting that there is a basement floor below the main floor as well. Um, there are no side doors. Uh, they can it just you kind of peer through. You kind of glance through the slats in the wooden frames outside of the windows. Um, you see figures moving around, but it's kind of hard to tell how many. But you definitely see that there are figures inside, and they don't seem to notice you as you kind of you do get a bit closer, look through, and then move off, um, just kind of blending in with the crowd. I report all this back to my companions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wondering if we could... Give me a perception check. With a 20. Yep. Roll first roll. 20. First, first roll. roll. So on, your, uh, on your first character sheet, yep. which is the one with all the stats, so your list of skills is that long box on the... Yep, that's what I said. That Perception's one, that one. The, yeah, plus one. So you get plus one. So roll this. 14. 14. Um, you... You you don't this tiefling seems to just reemerge. I mean you'd spotted her before, she seems to have wandered off. Mm -hmm. Um she seemed to just be taking in the sights and looking around the streets. But you do kind of overhear a little bit about as she recites some of the information back, you kind of overhear like there's some figures inside. I'm not sure what, how many, but I could see. So you can see catch okay. glimpses of the conversation. So th at this point I've noticed that they haven't like gone in straight away, but no. they're kind of interested. Mm. So I kind of just make a little bit of a <laughs> Sort of like a, a gesture to sort of uh, a, come a subtle over, kind of like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. You can see this gnome making some very strange gestures. <laughs> is it moving at us? Yeah, I think so. I want to push Trailmar towards him. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, <laughs> go find out what he wants. Yes. Yeah, you, you, um, you, are you, what, what do you, what business do you have with this, this building here? Who what, wants to know? What business do you have with well, uh, this building here? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I've been making notes and I just, I can't, they've been stolen from me and I, 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 I believe the thieves live here. You don't got, you guys don't really look like the sort of people that have been going in though. Are you, have something you've lost or what, what brings you here? Well, what, what what was stolen from you? Well, it's just um, you know notes and, and research and things that I've been doing. I'm a I'm a researcher on the Lightfall, you see, and I've just just it's all gone. Everything. I, I my house has been completely ransacked, and I've lost all my notes. And all I, I I I've managed to track down just about that something is going on here with with some kind of thieves that have just tried to take all my stuff from me. And now I, I, I can't get in, I don't know, I, I've tried knocking, but no one even answers. I think I'm, it's quite, quite small, but I think they can see me through the windows. <laughs> at, at this point, like, he is, uh, you're about three foot something, I mm -hmm. think. So he is literally even looking up to Alora, which is an unusual thing for Alora. <laughs> you feel like, tall. Yeah, like, outside of, like, halflings and gnomes are the only people in the world that make you feel tall. I feel um, very important <laughs> right now. Um, and yeah, but he does have this this age and wisdom to him that you didn't expect with such bright hair and um, and you can now see. I don't know if we've got if you want to flash the artwork up behind it or, or oh yeah, Steve. Um, <laughs> I forgot that we do have we Nina's do have Nina's well. lovely art. Um, this is amazing. If we can yeah. She just, nailed this. Artwork, so this is this is Cap's character. This is what he looks Ray. like. Hey. <laughs> so you can see he has this bright. <laughs> he has like these goggles kind of currently pushed up on his forehead. He's wearing this kind of bright maroon kind of robe as well. Um, and you can see that like he has like chain like you know. Belts with like pouches with like mini notebooks and things all strapped to him and, and everything away. else. But I, I'm like I'm like <laughs> visually distressed because like these notes are like obviously quite important to me and the fact that they've gone I'm just like like this my life seems very earnest. Can yes. I roll an insight check just I'm to make sure to that, do that as well? Can yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You all can. Uh, Eleven. Twenty. Okay. Let's we'll wait for 
Uh, 14. 14. I mean, all of you pretty much get the sense that he's actually being quite genuine. You would have the most insight to him, and like, yeah, this guy is really upset that these notes have been taken. They obviously mean an awful lot to him, um, but also you can get this sense that he this he's not used to this. He's not used to having to deal with this situation, and he doesn't really know what to do next. Um, he looks he, he looks like he needs help. Okay. Have you seen any? Tieflings around. Nothing, nothing like that since I've I've been here. I've I've spent a, spent a few days kind of keeping an eye on the place, but it's just people go up to them, put a hand through, and in they go. But the the only other thing you have seen is they do sometimes take deliveries, which will arrive normally in a large wagon, and they'll normally have uh, large barrels and crates, and they'll normally lower down into the cellar. And that's also the only information. This other information that Mark forgot to give me. <laughs> Have you seen any of the people who work within the brewery? They, they keep to themselves. I mean, uh, I'm, I, I, I have to go to sleep eventually, and uh, I, I'm doing what I can and taking what notes I can. All I see is that the shutter opens, the hand goes in, and if, if for some reason they get let in, and that's it, really. There's nothing else going on. It's, it, it's peculiar, but I'm, I'm, I'm confident that this is where my notes have been taken to. I, I, they must be here somewhere. I just I need to get inside. Can you? Do you guys... What? Why? Why are you here? What do you? I mean, can we? Can we go in? We do you have a, a hand thing with the? Can we do the? Get in the door. <laughs> I we, don't know what the hand thing is. We, we have we reason just... to believe that uh, the missing tiefling are being held here at this brewery. You don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> tiefling. Okay. <laughs> like, um, there are three, like her. Uh, okay. There yes. are currently three missing in the city, mm. and they can all be traced back to this company. But if you haven't seen any going in, but you have seen them taking deliveries, mm -hmm. you know, they could always shove a tiefling in a barrel or something and sneak them in that She's way. She's glaring. She's doing the thing again. She's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing the thing again. I mean, you, you, you know from fair what, from assumption. <laughs> from last time, you remember that the poison does pretty much render them completely unconscious. Yeah. So you it's, not, easily it's not a wild Stick them in a barrel, clamp the lid on, and no one would know. I mean, there's nothing about the deliveries that look weird to me, but possibly. What about a drow? Have you seen a drow? All, all I all I see are these these people with the the hoods and the and they're a, a bit suspicious and they they do the arm thing and they and they go in. It's no. Have I mean, you seen a mark on their arm? There give, seems to be. Give me an intelligence check. So you, you add this. my list thing. And it's just a excuse me. Yep. So you plus just add three. Plus three. Okay. Fifteen. Fifteen. You do remember it was. I do it was, it was, it was, it was <laughs> last last evening uh, when you went in. You just caught a glimpse. One of them had he as he was approaching the brewery. He rolled up his sleeve, and you think he might have glanced at a tattoo or something, but you couldn't see what. Some it kind just of mark, looked, yeah. there was some sort of mark, but you didn't see it in detail. You, yeah. As he was walking past, he rolled up his sleeve, and there was something on his forearm, and that was the last thing you saw. Okay. I am not pleased with <laughs> this discovery. I uh, use disguise self to mm -hmm. metamorphosize my arm. In front of him? So in front of you. Okay, so okay. the first thing you notice is um, whoever this, this drow is, mm -hmm. it definitely has some mastery of arcane magic mm -hmm. because as he summons it, it's not, you can recognize the incantations and the gestures of the spell and it just whoosh, morphs this symbol, uh, which is a broken, it's a, a, a cloud broken by a thunderbolt. Okay. And it, it seems to have materialized on his skin. Did it look anything like this? You reckon so? Yeah. So, I mean, now you see it again. Yeah. <laughs> now that you mention it, I mean, that's pretty familiar. Yeah. It's like, as you see it, it kind of triggers and it looks the right shape and size and that sort of thing. I, th I think you might be on something. So we know that it's the Broken Sky. Yeah. That name, obviously, with what you know. Ah, broken Bastards, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that, then that's, we're, we're pretty much there, yes. Yeah, I mean... Uh, uh. Do you know about these? Broken Bastards, is this a subdivision? The broken, yes, broken. <laughs> <laughs> so all all I've managed to figure out is that the people who have taken my notes that I've been working my entire life on about the lightfall seem to be of a thieves guild that that are connected in some way to the broken sky. I don't know how, I don't know why, but for some reason they needed to get my notes quite urgently and have stolen everything I've got. And yes, broken sky. I mean that that seems to be. I don't know anything about them. Just 
The thieves, that's all I know, and I want to get my stuff back. So they've stolen your notes, they've stolen tieflings, or kidnapped them. <laughs> why would they steal... Yeah. If they... And why would Xandar They're trying to them? take down Korak. Mystery. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to take down Korak. Are you having a good day, Mark? <laughs> I'm a great day. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to take down Korak. And they are doing this by stealing someone's notes about the Lightfall and kidnapping tieflings. Specifically, it might be worth just, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a sorcerer, I sort of do a little flicker of uh, magic on my, yeah. on my hand, and you can see, sort of show again, you, you know, magic. His, his, source of, <laughs> his source of magic is obviously very different to yours, because um, with yours, like, you always can tell that, that if it's a warlock pact, it's very different. His seems very unstable. <laughs> you, kind of, you see this flicker of flame, and to you two, it, it just looks like magic. Like, oh, fire, magic, fire. You recognise that that's barely contained. Like, so it's what's coming off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is definitely, there's definitely some instability there. So, more, more specifically, the, the research that I've been doing is into the effects of, of magic and the light fall, and whether that can be combined or used or in any way. But I don't, I don't see why. A, any any tea things would be taken for for for, for the purpose. It's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a purely a researcher. I'm just working out the light for and the magic properties of it. Mm. We've run into the broken sky before, and mm. as in our experience, they seek to disrupt commerce and businesses. The tea things we're looking for were trying to set up their own business. Your notes, however, on the light fall, I do not see why they would want them. But if you're trying to look into how the Lightfall could affect magic, perhaps they could be looking at this as some mm. form of weaponry to use against Korak to overthrow him. It's worrying. You, you would know from stories of your father. It is. It is very famously Korak carries a blade made of full shard, um, a, an actual a <laughs> sword old. made of of yeah. short shard, which which dampens yeah. magic. So there could be something to do with that as well. His sword dampens magic. Yeah, uh, any any full shard does. Like he has a sword made of it, but any full shard would also dampen magic. What was the um, the meteor called again? For like, Pator's light or something? Uh, Pelor's light. Pelor's yeah. light Pelor is so, the yeah. god of the sun, yeah. um, and it was the the comet, the celestial comet, was named after him because people figured it was associated. So when when Loban is talking about his magic and his research, he's talking about it in relation to Pelor's light and the light fall. That yeah. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, if we know they that found a way to <laughs> neutralize Korak's sword. Just <laughs> because I know, like, I love the way that Juto's <laughs> mind thinks of, like, mmm, how can I use this thing. to kill Korak? Who says I want to kill him, Mark? No, Who says I want to kill him? Know. Maybe I'm going to change Tiefel and Korak. Stop, Korak! You're the Korak now! <laughs> What this whole game is all about is Kim just getting her at like secretly showing how much she hates me. <laughs> She's just like, Korak's played by the DM. My character's gonna <laughs> hate him. <laughs> oh, he's a murdering bastard. Um, how can I stop him? <laughs> Lightfall, you say? Way to stop it, you say? <laughs> that was really pretty. We're now best friends! <laughs> oh my god. Where did that come from? Please carry on. Please ignore me. Maybe I'm just going to make Jutai leave and bugger off back to the monster. Oh, no, mate, right? there he is. <laughs> hey, Jutai, should we go inside this inn? Yeah, should we do that? Or should we... <laughs> six, six points of... No, I'm not doing it! I'm not doing it! <laughs> Oh man. Okay, um, so... And we're back in the room. At this point, I'm getting kind of... I'm, I'm really fidgety. I'm, I like... I've been waiting for a long time to get <coughs> yeah, this, yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of like... Look, the, the why is irrelevant. Can we just get in the place so I can get my notes and go. I, I just, I want to, I need my magic. I, well, I t I'll show you all my research if you if it will help you, but I mean, I, I just need to get them back. We, we can help you if we need, we will probably need some help ourselves getting in because we don't know. I mean, the only thing we could do at the moment is you show us Well, you did the thing later. with your hand and the, can we, I mean, would that get us in? You mentioned you to say something. Do you have to say something as well? You didn't. You saw them speaking, but it. You didn't. You don't know. You basically okay. could. You can. You can read lips, but you could see them speaking with somebody. Mm -hmm. Then they put their hand through, and then they got that in. Maybe just say hello. It's me. And put it <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps <laughs> you could say you're linked to the Sandar. For what? <laughs> Zandar. Oh, Zandar! Oh, sorry. 
Yeah. <laughs> you said the Xander. Oh, Xander. The, oh, yeah. Tieflings never get drow names, right? Yeah. No, they just, oh. it's something about the X and the Y's. Oh, I just don't get them. I'm concerned with how many figures you saw inside, though. What if... Why don't we... Look. Why don't <coughs> I see, disguise myself? Oh, God. This always goes great. As an old lady. As an old no, lady. no, no. Not an old lady. Mm -hmm. I'll disguise myself as a hooded human with the tattoo. I shall talk to the doorman, and if all else fails, I shall use my suggestion spell to try and get us in. I'm just worried about what's waiting on the other side of the door. I'm sure Trelamar can, Mr. I can, Mr. Mr. Elise can. Yeah. <laughs> sure, Trelamar can deal with it single-handedly. I can't even finish the sentence. Sure. Okay. Put it put it this way: if 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 all goes wrong and, and they and they try to if if it all goes tits up, I I, I have a way of distracting them, should we say, that we could so we could just get the hell out of here and just go. Because I mean, okay. what's the worst that could happen if we try? Right? right? He falls down again. Well, yeah. I mean. I have this really she, she unfortunate. Uh, I've got some bad experience with this group with trying to keep people. Do you fall down a lot or? No. Oh. <laughs> she, picks pe one. she picks You're people up. I just pick up. them up. I just pick them up. She <laughs> turns into a bear. And a wolf. I mean, I get knocked down, but I get up again. <laughs> and they're never going to keep you down. <laughs> right? never so that's good stuff. Yeah, good job. Um, <laughs> it operates as a normal brewery at night. For, from from what I can tell, they're 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 fronting as as a as a normal establishment. But any time that someone has this, they just mm. they I mean uh, maybe there's a different place that they get to go into. And I don't know what the building's internals are like, and I don't know how to get that information. So I have no idea. Perhaps yeah, you yeah. could get inside, Mister Leaf, and open the the cellar. Yeah. Okay. I shall disguise myself. Let's scope it out, and if anything goes wrong. Telepathically get Granamir to make noises at us. It's true, you could leave Granamir with him as long as he's within a hundred feet. He could yeah. hear you. How close am I to the door? Um, I mean, you can pretty much like. How my te telepathy? Oh, no, I've got to be looking at them, haven't you I? Could, and, and and it's only 30 feet as well. Oh, shite. So, but, okay. but Granamir is but 100 Granamere, feet and yeah. you don't okay. need line of sight to him, you can always sense where he is. Um, you are currently, I, I would say you guys are on the other side of the street, so maybe like 40 <coughs> feet, 50 feet away. Okay. You're um, just having this massive top. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but you kind of like, because the, the small gnome, who hasn't in given you his name yet, uh, the small gnome was just sat on the park bench kind of opposite and it looked like Whoops. he was reading like, <laughs> right in the book. Um, just because you know you know your name, but yeah. they Juto don't doesn't care. Well, we have no, we I know have any introductions. So that's fine. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, um, but you guys have just been sat, and it does just look like you are having a conversation with a gnome sat on a bench. Like yeah. it doesn't look too suspicious at this point. Um, maybe, maybe go around the building and maybe hide behind another building while you change, just in case they're watching out the window. No, that's easy to do. Like, there's loads of buildings nearby. Yeah. You can just go into an alleyway, literally, because it's instantaneous. Like, you're just like, whoosh, and then you walk out as a different person. Okay, I'll do that. Okay, so Trelmar uh, heads off, and you see. You I'll leave Granami as well. You leave Granami with Alora. Yeah. Um, you head off uh, around, like, <laughs> through an alleyway, and you do a very dramatic scene where, as you walk through the alleyway, your form shifts and your clothing <laughs> merges, and then as you emerge on the other side, you are now this hooded. Quite plain looking human male wearing kind of citizen's clothing but with this hooded cloak and the tattoo, the broken sky tattoo is emblazoned on your arm. And you walk up to the, the heavy dark oak door of the Black Valley Brewery um, and you hear. Oh. I'm good at my sound effects. You hear. It's very always scary. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, editor skill being good at sound effects. <laughs> you, um, after a few moments, you do hear kind of, uh, kind of a couple of mutterings and grumblings from inside. And then you just hear footsteps coming up towards the door, and then it opens ever so slightly. And you can see that there probably is some sort of like chain or locking mechanism between it. And this kind of gnarled looking human face, beaks, nose, hard grey eyes, thin wispy hair kind of peers half a face through. He's just like, What do you want? I'm here to speak to Xander. And is that what you put the arm through, or I'll you put my arm through? He kind of looks at it, he's like, Xandar, eh? What business do you have with him? The business that I have with him is between me and me alone. Okay, give me um, persuasion. Or a deception. Whichever is higher. Uh, deception. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. It's all right. <laughs> Eight. Don't, don't worry that much. <laughs> I didn't roll where he's like. 
Is it a scheduled appointment? Do I have to go and let him know that you're, you're here to see him, or is he expecting you? Oh, he's expecting me. Okay. Um, you hear like, all right. The door shuts, you hear like, and then the door opens fully, and you can now see a man. Um, he seems to be wearing what, like a loose kind of white shirt. He kind of looks a bit like a bartender. He's got like an oil, like a rag sticking out of his belt. But you can see that his belt, he definitely has like dagger sheaths and things like that on it as well. Um, he just opens it up. He's just like, very well, friend, come inside. He just gestures you in. Okay, I shall go in. Okay. So at this point, can I, am I close enough to do a sleep spell on the doorman? <laughs> uh, give me a second. Uh, I have my, <laughs> I've, got my, I've got my book open already. No, it's alright, I won't. Oh. I, this will be funnier if you don't Is know this what's why? Oh, right. Is well, why? I mean, I'm a. I mean, no, Cam, Cam, don't listen to them. You've done it now. <laughs> oh no, you haven't technically done it, but I like the idea. You do what you want to do. Yes, you are within range. So sleep has a range of up to 90 feet. Okay. And it's um, creatures within 20 feet of a point you choose within range um, in ascending order of their hit points. So the, anybody with the lowest amount of hit points will be affected first. Okay. Was and so you roll that, you roll that, and then the amount affected amount will fall asleep. So would you like to cast this? Would it affect Fine Tranamar here? Yeah. It would, yes. Oh. Potentially. <laughs> if, he, if he has the lower amount of hit points, it will affect him first. If, if, it, if the other guy well, has I will, hit points... I'll, Fall asleep. Potentially. Yeah. Amazing. So I'm going to do that because <laughs> okay. I want to get my notes back. So, All right, so the first thing you're going to do <laughs> oh, no. is you're going to roll a d20 okay. and tell me if it's even or odd. <laughs> now for those of you who I know, so <laughs> Kath is playing a wild magic sorcerer, but I have wild. slightly changed the wild magic surge rules because an, oh, having it happen on a roll of a one means it never happens. What is that? A two. <laughs> a two. Even's good. Even's, Even's good. fine. Okay. Right, so now I need you to roll me 5d8, which is the eighth. So <laughs> so I, yes. I need you to roll Five, it, roll it five times and then add it all up and tell me the total. Right, okay, fine. Six, eight, nine. Oh my god. Uh, plus eight is seventeen, and five is twenty-two. Uh, I think I did that right. N- no, because no. you had more to start with. What no. was it? What was the last two things that you rolled? It was a uh, six, eight, nine, eight, five. Okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> she writes everything. She yeah, camera. So it's thirty-six in total. Well, I mean that's a. Good How many hit number. points do you have? Oh shit, he's oh, down. Hell, <laughs> twenty-three hit points. You've got twenty-three I'm, hit points. But, but I'm fifteen armor class. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, armor no. class. Oh, <laughs> this is magical armor sleep. sleep. <laughs> However. No, Granamir is more than he's not next to you. You don't have advantage on saving. Oh shit, bags. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what have I done? So, <laughs> kill me, Catherine. So we can just drag you along, it's no, fine, don't worry about it. Fantastic. So, um, the, you two, next to this gnome, he just seems to like, his eyes seem to focus for a moment, and there's almost a rainbow pattern uh, of like colour across his eyes, and he just raises his hand up and makes a few gestures. <laughs> Let me just check the I effects love this. on this. this is so good. You have way too much fun when people are in danger. <laughs> no, I love it. You sadist. Falls <laughs> unconscious until the spell ends. No saving three. You are not. Oh, you're an elf. You're immune. Yeah! To yeah! I completely. I people would have gone mental if I hadn't remembered that. You have fey ancestry, which means you are immune to magical sleep and have advantage on change Oh, perfect. Spells. There you go. Sleep. So you cast this thing, and like you feel this very strange kind of like. Uh, drowsiness, but you know, you're elven, it kind of, you shrug it off. And then the guy next to you, like this gnarled human, you see his eyes just kind of flutter, and then he just, poof, just falls to the ground, <laughs> un- like snoring unconscious. That is when you hear, fr- as you, like, you've stepped in, and what you didn't see is you had actually stepped oh, through, now. and as this door was being closed, it didn't close fully, is when he falls asleep. You look up, and you can now see a two tiered floor bar. Uh, Tables and chairs all over the place, a balcony over the top, with a bar to the side, with a door behind the bar. Um, And you can see that there are about four (laughs) people in the bar, two of which are up at the top, who appear to be, who, so that's the top four, who appear to be sat at one of the tables opposite the door, and then two below, who were also sat at one of the tables, whoop. Keeping a watch on the door. They see this man fall down, they look at you, and then instantly you can see them starting to pull out weapons and things like that. 
Everybody roll initiative. Oh, oh God. God. Christ. <laughs> oh, I don't even know what I'm doing. this prick in? <laughs> Amazing! Oh, Af, my God. You are now one of my favourites. I genuinely thought there wouldn't be anybody in because it's early in the morning. I know. It's 11. What is everyone doing it's there? bloody Brilliant. alcoholic subtle mm-hmm. there. What was the set the rules for all? Sorry. So this is an initiative. So on your front page, mm-hmm. so this uh, determines the speed at which you go in combat. So this is 11. kind of like your reactions. <laughs> okay. Cool. Oh, okay. Right. Eighteen. Or like a sheet of your paper, please, because I don't have anything just to write on. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, I've got those guys. Well, so be prepared, as they say. So. <clears throat> Fighting, finally! Come on! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> it's been two weeks, I can't remember how to fight. <laughs> it's been two weeks <laughs> of Trellar not going unconscious. Yeah. Uh, right, hang on a minute, I've just got a lot of stuff. Well, I've got to work out. <laughs> Thanks to Cap. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I love it! It's brilliant! <laughs> right, so they... That would have been hilarious, one. If, I, hilarious if I'd have fallen asleep so as well. That would have been so good. Been so funny. <laughs> if you funny, hadn't had funny, not thing. funny. Yeah. Oh my god! If like they would have just been like, <laughs> like, why is this guy asleep? <laughs> but this is way better. Would it have sent both him and the doorman asleep, or just him? Uh, with the amount of hit points, no, because the way it works with sleep spell is you subtract the amount of hit points it takes right, to render somebody asleep, and then any leftover would apply. Yeah. And they both had. So I don't want to give too much away, but the guy, the other human did have like sl- ever so slightly more hit points than you. Okay. But yeah, it would have just taken up way too much. Right, so Elora, initiative. Uh, 21. 21. Trelamar. 11. 11. Loban. 18. 18. Juto. 18. Right, so um, Elora, Loban and Juto though, with the exception of you, because you know that you've cast a spell, the, the, or you don't know what's happened. You, all okay. you've seen is him go inside, you two have seen him do some magic, you know that your spell has worked, and you've seen this guy fall down, yeah. but that's all you know. Right? So I'm just like, right, let's go. Kind right. Of thing. So, so the way, so first one is you. You don't know what's happening inside. All you, all you know is that he's done something. What did you do? There might be one or maybe two people asleep now. Is Trelamar one of them? I'm not sure. <laughs> do, I, do I know that elves are in here? Uh, I would say. You probably forgot it, like being quite absent-minded yeah. in the in the moment, the heat of the moment. But now that you think about it, you're like, "Oh no, he's an elf." It's <laughs> luckily, he's fine. <laughs> it's just no, I wasn't risking his life. It's, I think, well, what do we I, do? Why did you do that? We that, were going to stealth in. Let's go. Uh, let's no, go. Not your initiative round. You can question him in a minute. Like this is literally. Laura's like, "What have you done? Are you doing anything I don't else?" Need to do question we need someone. to go and help? But we. Trelamar's in there on his own, shall we? I'm I don't know his name, story. but... Okay, I'll say that with you kind of questioning uh, Logan, um, <laughs> the that'll probably be your action, but you can move you, use your movement to move up to it. All right, and let's part putting minis on the bird. So Trelamar is currently inside. There is also a man unconscious on the floor next to him. <laughs> uh, do you want to pass me human Elora and Wolf Elora? Wait, isn't... You've just put them on the first floor. Yeah, you've put them on the first, fl- first oh, floor. Shit, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Actually, I think you'll find you put them on the first floor. They should be yeah, on the I'll ground put, floor. I'll put you there, but you are basically, it's only because I don't have enough room. <coughs> can Steve get all of this? I don't know. Probably not. A little bit more that way. Yeah, I'm trying to, but you know, No, 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 the other way. Is it? Away from you. Away, away? from you. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Can you see the top? <coughs> yes. Yeah. You can see anything. Cool. So, you run up to the door. But I'd say that with the questioning of Loban, you probably that's all you're going to be able to do this turn. Is like can I see him? You can literally you get up to it and you can see that there is this human gnarled human kind of like man like he looks like a bartender unconscious snoring on the ground. You can see Trelamar is looking into the room <laughs> and has this look of like oh shit. Um, it's fine. And then that's it. Uh, Loban and Juto. Juto first because you have the high dex. Excuse me. Um. So you hear Loban what he said and you see Alora start to move off towards it. Idiot gnome, <laughs> and push him out of the way, go in. <laughs> You're gonna right rush in. Try to help! Can't mm. hear you, too busy walking past you, <laughs> idiot. It was about 50 feet away, so you can get there just about. So you can either, if you wanna move right up to the entrance, it's gonna take two movements for you. Can I move in front of Trell? Yeah. Yeah, basically like that. So you kind of you burst through this door, like you kind of like push it out the way. You step inside, you because you're a monkey of accelerated movement as well. You move in, and that's when you see these rough-looking humans, like male and female, all kind of like pulling out weapons aimed towards Trell. 
um, and now you, as they see you burst through the door, and it seems that you bursting through has kind of made them realise that it is a proper attack, and you can now see them readying crossbows and things like that. Um, <laughs> Loban, what would you like to do? Um, well, I'm going to just kind of help. How is it going to take everything for me to get up with them? <laughs> so, because your little legs, you move at 20, <laughs> you move at 25 feet per round. Right. So that's effectively five squares. They are 50 feet away, so it takes your full round to just mm, yeah. literally like, <laughs> well, that's what kind of like run over to it. Basically, Wait for me. yeah, and you get basically just outside the door as well. Um, as you kind of your little legs like. Yeah. <laughs> Chalamar. These, as Juto burst through, they are definitely not going to like. You can see that they might have asked you what happened, but now they think they're being attacked, and they look like they're about to react in kind. Uh, when in doubt, Eldritch Blast them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're just going to pick one of them. Which one? So you um, currently have two up on the balcony and two down below. There's also, you can see, so I should probably describe a bit more. Yeah. You can see that there is a large chandelier which seems to hover over the sort of main area in the building. Uh, you can see that's the kind of dotted outline is the chandelier. It seems to be anchored to a point on the second floor. There is a stairway that leads um, up to the balcony from the back and then a large bar with stools all around it. Um, and then a small room tucked behind the bar as well. So is that, that chandelier is over the heads of these two chaps here? No, this, this oh, is no, the chandelier. Oh, there. oh right. yeah. okay. So the chandelier is here. These two are actually currently underneath, underneath the balcony, the balcony. Oh, like, I sat at yep. two tables, basically. Uh, you also have like a number of shelves next to you, and then this is the bar with all the stools next to it. Okay, well, I shall blast the nearest man. Okay. Blast. So that would probably be one of these two. Yeah, okay. uh, that one. Yeah, why not? Eighteen. Eighteen easily hits. This purple crackling energy blasts out from you as it strikes uh, the one of the men square in the chest. This ray of eldritch power. Twelve. Twelve points of damage. Holy shit. <laughs> um, you pretty much like you can see like he gasps <clears throat> as it burns through the leather chest like the leather breastplate he seems to be wearing <laughs> under his shirt <laughs> scorches his chest which is red raw it looks like you burnt through several layers of skin oh amazing he's barely <laughs> gasping he's barely hanging on he's like <gasps> <gasps> like just heaving desperately oh, um, are you going to, would you like to move <coughs> i am um, can i uh, so that's the bar is it this is the bar here can yes. i like Run over and like dive into the. So he is currently. So you kind of leap over the unconscious man. Yeah. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, you can get basically. I would say you can just get behind it that like there. Okay. Um, technically, actually, you could go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And you can get to, yeah. So I'd say you can get to about there. That's cool. So you're kind of, and you're going to duck that behind it. Yep. Okay, so while you're doing that, you currently have what's called half cover. Okay. So you have plus two AC and plus two to any dexterity saving throws. So when people try and strike you, if you're taking cover, remember that you have plus two extra armor class against that. Oh, okay. So cool. that's something which we've not been doing that much of, but I re refreshed <coughs> myself on the rules. He is currently asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the four men, um, these two, uh, they take a step back and flip the table over and they both seem to take cover behind that after seeing you blast them in this thing. They kind of duck behind it and they levy a series of hand crossbows in your direction. Um, two of them take aim at Juto and two of them take aim at you. Uh, this, oh, you've got your fucking deflect missiles, haven't you? Oh, fucking... Oh, man, I hate them. Mums. So, <laughs> we'll do attacks against you because... I'll give time Kim to read up on her thing, which allows her to catch fucking crossbow bolts out of midair. What? Um, wow. yeah, Jesus, that's that's cool. nice. <laughs> now, it's worth remembering you can only do that against one because it takes your reaction to do, I believe. Um, two attacks against you. The first one is a nine, so it doesn't hit, just thuds into the bar overhead. The other one is a 15. But you've got. Uh, no. It's 15, yeah, so yeah, isn't it? Yeah, so just again, it just bam, bam into the head of the bar. Have you found your deflect missiles? Do you know what happens? I think it's you your reduce crossbows. damage. Uh, you can use your reaction to deflect or catch a missile when you are hit by a ranged weapon attack. Okay. When so you do so, the damage you take is reduced by 1d10 plus your dex mod and your monk level. Okay, so it's, if it hits you, then you get to do it. Mm. Well, let's see if it hits you. Two attacks against you. Ten, which is no. a miss. Seven, which is a miss. No. Starting off the day strong, gonna save those high rolls. Because Cam's not here. Like if I was wrong, if that was against Cam, they'd be four natural twenties. Or him. No, yeah, that's what actually what I'm saying. Like I've missed him as well. Frickin' Trell. Um that guy's asleep, doesn't do anything. Elora. 
What would you like to do? So you can just you see this flurry of crossbow bolts just <laughs> flying down from inside this room. Okay. So I guess I'm gonna go into the room to okay. start with. Where would you like to go inside the room? Um about five yeah. foot of movement to go in there behind you two. There's a sleeping man next to you, snoring like a baby. How far away are those two guys? Right? So they are currently, so if you, from where you are, which is about here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and then the same will be for these guys. They're about 35 feet away. <clears throat> I'm going bare. Roar! I have 40 feet of movement so I can get to them. Okay, so are you literally just going to charge to the middle of them, are you? I'm going to so go direction. for, if I do multi-attack and that one is, if I do two strikes but the first one kills him, does it move on to the other guy? Uh, you can choose. So if you have two attacks, you even if it didn't oh, right, kill okay, him, you okay. can go one, one, okay. even if it didn't kill them. I, mean, I am <coughs> going to uh, do multi-attack first on the one that's really damaged. Okay. Uh, so they are so still like behind this, this table, so they're kind of using it to try and fend you off. I'm going to go around the they, they, and they literally pull the table with them because it's like, oh. it's just literally on its side. They're like, they, 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 you're a huge bear, they're like, ah! <laughs> 24. 24 still hits, you're going to kill him, he's on one uh, hit point. Um, don't even need to roll damage. Okay. That's not the one that I... Um, you just, I this claw just <laughs> rapes you. You send several splinters of this table, you literally rip part of this table off and it just catches him. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and it just gets pulled down by your claw. Uh, so another, it's a claw attack. So uh, is she a bear or a wolf? Fifteen. Bear, but we only have. That's only a fifteen. A uh, fifteen does not hit that with the like with the table. He just barely manages to use the remnants of oh, this thing. Barely, <laughs> barely. barely. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, your claws rake through. You hear this horrible wood claw. <laughs> I'm just gonna growl at him. You can just see him. There's a moment of fear, and then his look is just determined, and he just seems. Um, Does it destroy terrible. his cover though? Huh? Does it destroy his cover? Yeah. Uh, he well, it kind of ripped some of it off, but not completely destroyed it. I mean, it's quite a big table. Like, imagine one of these desks. Like, a bear can make them work. <laughs> well, on. you show me a bear destroying a table in one blow, <laughs> and then we'll see. Uh, that was a Laura's go. You've <laughs> done your action. Gonna Google you need bonus it, action, Juto. Uh, so, bear, bear Laura is currently like fighting this one up here. You've got two that, up on the balcony. Isn't that dude dead? One of them is. Oh, yeah, Would you kindly remove his mini? Yes. Thank you. What is Grandma doing? What's that poop? See, you've put him in. I don't know. Just <laughs> Hello, my honey. Hello, my baby. Hello, my ragtime gal. Ragtime. Jesus. Do I have <laughs> enough movement to go to the other man? <coughs> uh, well, the one that Laura's currently fighting? Savaging. So, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35. Yeah, you've got loads because you're a monk. Yeah, get me over there then. I would say that now that you're both fighting him, he loses his cover. Because oh. he can't literally defend against both of you. Yeah, I got a pointy stick. Well, he can use it against I got a pointy <laughs> stick. <laughs> I can't remember how to fight. D20 plus your attack bonus for your weapon that you are using. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Hits. You thrust out with the guan down. Which one's the D8? <laughs> Ca calf. Hmm? Newcomer calf. Please tell him which is the D8. It's the diamond. Is that a diamond? A diamond, mate. Yeah, that's is that one. a diamond? That's the one. Okay. Uh, hang on, hang on. You take five points of psychic damage. Nope. What do you mean, no? I'm the DM. I mean, no. <laughs> Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Wow. Twelve. Again, you you ram this this huge guandao. You just slice across him, catching him a deep gash along his, his neck. Ah, he like cries out in pain. You see wow. the blood start to seep down. He's barely alive, but he's just barely. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm feeling good today. Can Sorry. I follow up with an additional like punch? With your bonus with your bonus action. Yes, you may. Uh, so it's that again, isn't it? Yep. You need to roll to hit him with an arm strike. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. You lash out. You don't need to roll damage because he's got two hit points left. No. One. One hit point left. You literally lash out with a roundhouse kick. You hear the neck snap. He just drops to the floor dead. I'm feeling no. good to die. Just done. Um, that's all of your movement, Loban. Right. Um, <laughs> He's still outside. Like I'm getting there, yeah. guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there in a second. It's fine. Um, so, have I got enough? My little legs. Can yep. my little legs get me to the, the to get to the table to get half cover and still do an attack? 
5, 10, 15. So you're going to go there. Yeah. And then I'd say it's a bonus action. You kind of like... In fact, you're quite weak, though. You're not a strong mm. man. Give no. me an athletics check. Can he not just sit okay. under it because he's so small? Yeah. Actually, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, if you want to just, <laughs> like, just hide under it, it. Yeah. you know there's there above you. It, yeah. yeah, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, so okay. do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I still make an attack if it's yeah, this guy? Yeah, you can still make an attack, right, okay. yeah. Um, I'm going to whip out my crossbow okay. and mm -hmm. aim at the already wounded archer at the top. There's nobody they, wounded. They, they, they haven't they? No, they haven't been wounded. We killed the one. Who was the other? We killed the one. We killed the one. He died. Yeah. Cool. He's dead. Just one of them then. Whichever okay. one you think would be So better. what you do is you take a d20 mm -hmm. and on your front sheet under attacks, which is the middle column, uh, there is one called light crossbow. Yep. So you add three. the first number to the attack roll. So you roll the d20 and add three. It's a 11. So you add 3, which is 14. No, no sorry, 8 11. plus 11. Yeah. Oh, 8 plus the, so it's yeah, 11. So, so 11. you kind of try and take aim. Mm -hmm. You're not super used to it. You kind of carry it for defensive purposes. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of try and aim. Thump, you fire the crossbow bolt. Um, but these two kind of, again, they've got the banister, which is kind of providing cover. They kind of duck down, thud, thuds into the wood in front of them and doesn't connect to hit. Okay. But you are currently kind of taking cover from mm -hmm. them as well. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was Logan's Go Trelamar. Uh, right now, because you can see that these two, you no longer have cover from the two up on the balcony. Okay. Because uh, they are literally aiming down at you. I shall... Did he get yeah. Garanir back as well? I'm assuming that Garanir came with the lore and has flown over to your shoulder, yeah. I should probably put his little mini down. Yeah, please, for my immersion. <laughs> Kim is going the right way for another. You keep time. doing that Aussie accent. There's not going to be an immersion because you'll be dead. <laughs> we'll just go on another epic quest. No, we won't. This time, to Australia. An Australian quest. <laughs> oh shit, no. we're Australia. <laughs> Trellamar, what are you I'll doing? Blast the one on the right. So you're just going Eldritch Blast again, yeah? Yeah, sure. Go for it. No oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> man. Of course it's between my knees. Of course it's between your thighs. <laughs> Powerful. So meaty. Oh, so. Uh, eight. As you're kind of being harassed by these bolts, you kind of have to kind of duck down and you kind of just quickly glance up and try and blind fire, but the blast just goes through, burns through, blasts a chunk of wood out of the roof, <laughs> shatters it down. Right, um, he's still asleep. He doesn't wake up until he takes damage, I don't believe. Am I allowed to move there? That's good. Oh, you can move if you'd like to. Yes, sorry. Uh, and you can bonus action as well if you want to do anything like that. Why am I looking at the monster manual? That's not going to have a sleep spell in it. Can I? So, so I'm not covered now. Not from the ones above you, because at the minute, like, imagine they're you've looking, got a bar. Uh, and yeah, they're shooting right. Down. Down. Um, so I will leap over the bar and head over to uh, Elora and okay. Jute. Give me a second. So get underneath the balcony. Yeah. Okay. Um, Come join us. Oh God, that means I'm the only one that they can actually see. <laughs> <laughs> you're under but a table, you're, you're, though. I'm under a table, it's fine. I'm just, like, yeah, you're I'm, little doing, little. Yeah. I'm just imagining, you know, what's that film, The Fifth Element, when mm -hmm. they have the fight on the ship? Oh, yeah, it's yeah. just shooting up. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Common! Common! Yeah. What are you doing, Common? Yeah. Throw me the, the, the gun! And then he just rolls the blind the, guy, he's like throwing yeah. the balls yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I love that, that's one of my favourite yeah. action scenes. Just Chris Rock. <laughs> so, for the for, the, for your information, uh, the creature remains unconscious until the spell ends. The sleeper takes damage, or someone uses an action to shake or slap the sleeper awake. <laughs> so, uh, what the two on the balcony will do is, seeing that Trelamar leaps under here, uh, one of them runs. He's going to run over to there. You can't see what he's doing. Uh, this one. I've got an itchy elbow. Um, and he will attempt to shoot at Bear Elora uh, as he moves around the side and can now get an angle. He's like <laughs> firing down. Oh, Elora. Not much. Nope, fails to hit as well. These guys are crap. Uh, the crossbow bolt just thuds into the wooden post next to you. But what you do see is two things seem to happen. Um, this area, I don't have my pen. No, I've done it. Uh, you're just going to have to. We'll have to use... Nope, I literally have nothing to draw the map with. But the whole staircase, and in fact it starts to spread out to your area as well, um, a thick fog begins to descend here. Okay. Uh, just like like thick smoke and fog and heavy mist seems to ensource all this area. Okay. Okay, uh, Elora, what would you like to do? I don't know, because the fog's distracting me now. Do I recognise the kind of... Give me a few nature check. Okay. 
You got like pretty good. Nineteen. Yeah. Um, you're pretty sure it's actually a spell. Uh, it's the fog cloud spell. Okay. Do I know if that damages? Anybody? It doesn't damage, but it heavily obscures. Like okay. trying to fight in it is very hard. Right. Trying to see things in it is very hard. Can I run up the stairs? You can. I need to check something. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, uh-oh. <laughs> so. The book's out. Lewis, you know it's, you know it's <laughs> trouble when the DM's got two books on him. It's always trouble. Right, okay. Hmm. Right, okay, so that's one thing you're going to need to do. And I think it's going to make sense. How heavy is this fog cloud? Super heavy. <laughs> Oh, so that's so heavy. <laughs> 20 foot radius sphere of fog, the sphere is lost in the duration. It's heavily obscured, okay. Would it? So, hmm? I eh? was wondering if I should hold my action until one of them comes. You've already said you're going upstairs. Consequences. So, so you go. He just wants to hurt me. <laughs> you get you're to, a bear. So, is that 40 do, feet? Uh, should, well, I'm assuming, so you would go from there. Problem is, is your large mini doesn't make it quite awkward, because it'd be like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. However, when you get to here, I need you to make me a dexterity saving throw. That's with my own stats though, right? Uh, no, with their stats. Because you, you use its physical stats, <coughs> but, but not its that. mental stats. But you, I don't have... You don't have it? I know what my dexterity is. What is a bear? Just plus nothing. It's just a plus nothing then. Thirteen. So as you start going to run up the stairs, your bear paws as you're running, suddenly you feel sharp stabbing pains as your paws go down and oh. you realise that there's been sharp metal spikes have been spread across these stairs. Your movement instantly stops, you take one point of damage as these caltrops stop you from running and you're like, ah! Um, until you, until you, I think it's until you heal that, or until after the encounter, your movement is reduced by ten feet as well. Right. Jeez. But yeah, you stop. You're like, oh, it like takes all your movement. It just stops you dead. So I don't do anything there. else then. That's pretty much all you can do, unless you want to use a bonus action or I, no. come out of thing. Okay. So Juto. Can I use an elemental attunement to? Dispel the fog or like shape it into a shape and, and blast it backwards. You can try. <laughs> you wouldn't know. Well, quite, as, a, as a character, you just don't know. Okay, you don't yeah. encounter this spell that frequently. You know that, I mean, your your elemental attune can create a small gust of wind. That might be enough to, uh, the, to blow it away. The other thing is, says like, uh, cause. Earth, fire, water, or mist that can fit within a one foot cube to shape itself into a crude form you design. Mm -hmm. This is currently okay. filling like 20 foot radius, so it's going to fill so that's quite way a lot too more. Big, yeah, it's yeah. way too big. Okay. I mean, you could do a section of it, you could form it into an object. I, don't, I think it's too much. I, I think even with the gust of wind, I think that's too weak to dispel it. If that's what you think, that's what you think. Can I use my Guandao to kind of spin? Like, you can try. try and like. Yeah. Um, Blow it away. Okay. Kind of like I did in the scarecrow, you know, when I was trying to spread trying to the, fire the fire everywhere. And stuff. Yeah. So what kind of throw so, would that be? Uh, I want, so first of all, you're going to have to move up towards it. Mm -hmm. So you kind of move up to just behind Elora, who you can see now is like, oh, this bear is like looking at its paws yeah. and you can see all these cow drops sticking out of it. Mm -hmm. And now that you can see her reacting to it, you can see the whole stair has been covered in them. Um, give me a dexterity, give me an acrobatics check as you kind of start spinning your guan down in a very kind of dramatic fashion and trying to spin it around. 18. 18. I will say you managed to clear away some of it, uh, but not the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, it still lingers at the top of the stairs, but you kind of blow it away from a lot of the, the main stair area, and now you can very clearly see that it's been covered in these caltrops. Are they like stuck to the floor or is it the, like, you know, when people just throw... It's like, like somebody's thrown, thrown a bunch of like, it's like Home Alone style, yeah. just like brrr, thrown everywhere. Um, but they are, they're heavy enough that your thing wasn't enough to dislodge to, them. Yeah. So do I have a bonus action now or...? Yeah, you've, so you, I would say you've used your movement, your action, so you still have a bonus action. Can I try and clear, like with my, the, the, the butt of my guanda, like try and, and sweep? You can, yeah. So, but you reckon you'd have to, it would literally you'd be clearing like a five foot a square stair, at a time. Yeah. So you'd literally have to clear an area move up, clear an area, move up, clear an area, and it's, it would probably take a while. Okay. But you can do it. I might as well try and okay. start. So, so you don't even need to make a check. You basically, so the you've cleared that, so 
Um, you basically clear the remaining ones underneath the Laura. Mm. You just clear those away, yeah. so that's now safe. So um, and you're going to literally have to start moving up and stuff like that mm. and doing it slowly. Uh, Loban, right. Um, my ray of frost. Yep. How much damage is that in comparison to my crossbow? Because I was thinking it might be better to do that one. Uh, it will be very comparable. Very comparable. So the way that spells work, cantrips. <laughs> They'll do a similar damage to a weapon, mm -hmm. but they won't often, They don't. you don't get to add a bonus to it. Right. Whereas weapons, you get to add bonuses. So Ray of Frost, I can tell you, it's got a range of 60 feet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, fid a frigid beam of blue-white light streaks towards a creature within range. Make a ranged spell attack, which is the bonus that I've written on your sheet, so yep. it's the under spells. On a hit, it takes 1d8 cold damage, and its speed is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. So you basically do D8 oh, so it slows it down and stuff, right? So, okay, yeah. Yeah. so it's about the same as your crossbow, but you don't get the plus one to it. Right. But at the same time, it's easier for you to hit with it. Yeah, okay. I think I'll do the Ray of Frost then. Okay. On the, uh, the guy, the, the... The one who's just above you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So you kind of, you lean out of underneath, from underneath this table, like poke your head out, you bring your hands together and <laughs> this icy beam shoots out. So you roll the D20 yep. and you're going to add your spell attack bonus. So it's 13, and then that's plus 5, so it's, it's 18. 18. So even though he's got the cover from this ba banister, mm -hmm. you manage to just like shake the spell as this beam flies out, and you can see it coats up one of his arms, this frigid ice, ah, as he calls out. Uh, you roll a d8 point of damage, so it's the triangle one. It's just, it's just that, whatever you roll. Two. Two. Oh, that's so it's, it, like, you can see it like frosting his arm, he kind of shakes it, and all this ice and frost falls yep. off. But you still know that you, you can see a bit of freezer burn and stuff mm -hmm. like that on him okay. as it takes effect. Uh, are you just going to go duck back under your, under your cover? Um, yeah, I'll just like little middle finger out front of the window. You give him flipping the bird. <laughs> Trelamar. Um, how high up is that balcony that's above me? Uh, so the balcony is 20 feet. 20 above feet. me? Yeah. So it's kind of like the floor of it is, you know, it's like 10 feet and then about 10 feet is, is your bead standing on top of it. So I'd say the roof of it is about probably, yeah, like 18 feet, 19 feet. Okay. Oh, is, it, is, it, on is it is it is it quite, 20. is it thick and heavy? It looks pretty sturdy and there's like strong pillars of like wood holding it up. Oh, right, okay. Uh, what are you thinking of trying I, to burn I was through thinking, it? Well, I was thinking of trying to blast You the... can still try. You don't technically know where the other one is. I've left him oh, okay. in a position, but you don't know exactly where he is. Uh, in that case, I shall get Granamir to attack the one closest to Oh, okay. To so you've Kat. sent Granamir to yeah. flying off. So he's got a fly speed of 50. So you can go 5, 10, 15. Uh, 60, 20, actually. Oh, 20, 30, 25, 30. Even then, still, he can still get to him in time. So he flies up here. Ah! Yeah! So he flies up. Uh, and you've got your stats for Granamir there. So is he going to try and sting him? Uh, or bite him? He's going to try and bite him. Okay. Oh, great. Two. Two. Um, Grenomir, like starts flapping in his face, but he can't <coughs> quite get purchased. He's not quite used to fighting directly. And the guy's like batting him away, trying like, God, get out of here! Oh, dragon beast, get away! You're useless, <laughs> Grenomir. Uh, you can still wow. move if you like. Don't call Grenomir a useless beast. <laughs> he didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. He didn't mean it. Didn't mean it. Uh, yeah, that's fine. No, you're just going to stay, stay where I am. You're going to stay where you are. Okay. I just feel like... Uh, so, this one is going to reappear. He basically reappears at the top of the stairs and aims down at Bear Laura. Um, where you've cleared some of the fog away, like, you can just about see him so you wouldn't have this advantage. Um, he does get a bit of cover still, but he's going to shoot down at Bear Laura. Can I try and catch her? Cause, like... Nope, not targeting you. But he's... Oh, she's right next to me. <laughs> if it, the ability is very specific, otherwise I would allow it. Right. Um, 18 to hit you. So you, it's not too much damage, don't worry. Can I just warn uh, her? It is. Wait. What you want to do? Just warn her. Be like, Stop. Yeah. it will just fuel my anger yeah. towards this guy. Okay. Five points of damage. Okay. I'll let you get hit then. Five points of damage. But he would. Uh, the other one. Yeah, he would try and do it. Too many spells. I need spell cards, man. Or I need to get my phone and use the app. I never used the app. Don't know what it's like. I've got an app for that. No, that's not really good for him. Hmm. No. Um, he basically, he pulls, he's got his hand crossbow in one hand, and then he pulls a short sword free with his other, and attempts to strike Granamir. No! <gasps> you sent him to attack you him. You knew this was going to happen. 16 to hit Granamir. Fucking hell, yeah. Granamir takes four points of damage. 
He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He gets a bad cut on the leg as this man like, oh, swings up, cuts him. Jesus. Chat's going to be really mad at me. Tra- Chat's going to be really mad at you as well. Uh, and that's what they do. Okay. Delora. What? Oh. oh. It's your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... So, Can I still move through these things? So, that's what I was just going to check. I believe if you move at half speed, you do not need to make a check. You're basically trying to delicately move around I'll do the that. traps. Yeah. But because that I still means, have 30 feet of movement. So that gets half the 15. Yeah, I just want to go speed, to up where So you go 5, 10, 15. You get to about that. I'd say you're in range to attack him still, yeah. I'll, I'll multi-attack him. Okay. Rip his um, face off. I'll try. Okay. I'll try Wear face. it. <laughs> oh, jeez! Say hi to his friend. Oh no, that was first a two. one. Again, this mist is—it it doesn't. You can see him, but he is using it and like okay. dodging in it and things like that. Next one, I'll hit. That's like a twenty-something. That is going to uh, hit. Yes. So two d six plus four. Bear Five, six, scary. seven, eight, nine, ten, like twelve. Twelve. Again, reducing him to but one hit point. <laughs> Bra! Just tears chunks out of his flesh. Oh. oh. <coughs> this is like coughing. And just, yeah, he is <laughs> looking pretty bad. You've got the pain throbbing in your pores. Um, yeah. As it fr- uh, fr- mm. Juto. Can I like jump up and I don't know? Yeah. Over the if you spend stuff? key points, you actually get bonuses to jump and stuff like that as well. I don't want to spend key points. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you just want to try and like wall run, basically. Yeah, can I like wall run up and like yeah, yeah, land on the Laura or over the Laura? Use yep. the Laura yeah. so I don't put my feet on the Laura. check. Just like in episode number one when you ran across the wall. <laughs> I like having this guy here. Did you all remind me of stuff I've said? 17. 17, yeah, I'd say that's enough. You basically flip up and you kind of use the banister of the stairs, put one hand on that, run along the side, nice. and then you kind of flip up, land on the top of Elora. I can't balance you up there. Um, but you basically <laughs> land on top of this bear, the Guandao out. Give me an attack roll. Make actually quickly just give me another acrobatics check to see how well balanced you are on top of it all. I'll be really still. Yeah, like you know, actually, like ace. It. You're <laughs> like perfect balance. You strike down, no problems. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Guandao, out. You don't need to roll damage. He's on one hit point. You just the head clean off. Just. Oh, just oh, you're a bit young to see that. Jesus Christ! Um. <laughs> Lands down beside Trellamar. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> off the side of the balcony. Uh, yeah, and you just this head just comes clean off. That kind of takes up all your rounds just to do the acrobatics, act balance, and then still strike. But you kind of look over at this one remaining guy who is now looking quite scared. I'm Logan, looking pretty pimp on the bear. Right? You're like bal- you are literally perfectly balanced on top of this bear. I'm staying really still, out. like blood dripping off my yeah, guandao. The blade was so quick. There was no blood on the blade. <laughs> <laughs> it just was like, and it just <laughs> <laughs> fell off. We on. are so good today. Loban, brilliant. Is it costing? My sorcery points to to do my level one spells. No, so yeah. only if you want to get the slots back, or if you want to use any of your meta the, magic the additional stuff. things. Yeah. Right, okay, that's fine then. So I'm gonna do a magic missile at that <coughs> son of a gun. Right, the first thing, roll me a d20. Yeah. Tell me if it's odd or even. Got to kill him. Odd, 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 odd. It's odd. It's a one. Yes. It's an actual natural one. Nice. Oh no, oh, that heat. means consequences. Right. Oh, it's wild. Da, 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 it's gonna go da, da, wild. Da, da, wild magic. <laughs> So, <laughs> let's see what happens. I'm just going to move Bear Laura and Juto to the top Yeah, because actually we're upstairs, <laughs> Mark. Oh, God. Sorry, yeah, but, thank you. Oh God. Right, I need you to, what is your, on your spell oh sheet, you're saying on spell save DC, what is it? Spell save. So on your spell <laughs> sheet, at yeah. the very top. Oh, 13. 13, right. Okay, I need to just quickly flip to the spell. Oh god, what's gonna happen, Calf? I just wanted to kill one. <laughs> I just wanted to be useful. So there. the other the other ruling I have is that even if you get the wild magic surge, your spell still goes off, obviously, because that would be too harsh if it punished you. Does getting the actual one like yeah, make he it bad? Or... He doesn't. No, no, like for me that I, it, so the way it normally works is you only get the wild magic surges on ones. But to me, that's just too infrequent for yeah. such an yeah. iconic part of it. Yeah. So I think even on is way more fair. Yeah, like yeah. It, yeah. it makes that's cool. much more sense. Um, the only thing I, do, I just need to check what type of save you have to make. Oh, oh god! <laughs> right, I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw, which because you are a gnome, you have advantage on. Right. So you get to roll twice and use the highest. Okay. This is good for you. Yes. Uh, 
12 plus 1, 13. 13. Or... One. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job you have advantage. Yes. So, um, pick an animal. Any animal you can think of that Logan would have seen or known. Um, a basset hound. A basset hound. <laughs> oh no. no. So, uh, the other thing I need to do is your magic missile still goes off, so you're going to take the d4, which is the pyramid, Yep. and you need to roll that three times, um, add it together, and then add three. So that, that even though I rolled the one, that still is happening. Magic missile right. still happens. Okay, cool. How many times, sorry? So three times, three times, and then add three to the end. So, one. The bottom, one. Yeah, these are really awkward. Um, I've also got one, one, two, oh, and God. four, four, six plus three is nine. Yep. Oof, yeah. Oof, he's not looking good. He's dead. Um, you've taken that one off. Right. You kind of Loban conjures this thing, and his magic, it, what seems to be blue at first, then changes rapidly <coughs> into multicolors. This shimmering energy aura just washes over him. And you just see these bolts of energy fly out. The man like gets struck num numerous times. Ah! As he cries, as he's like, pu like pummeled by this magical force. Then you just see a flash under the table. That's all the rest of you see. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come to you in a minute. Um, oh Trellamar. Uh, right. As a Granamir is going to come back to me. By how as Granamar goes to fly back to oh. you, he gets a free swipe at him because it's an attack. Oh fuck! Don't do that. No, maybe not then. Um, Granamir is going to bite the man. <laughs> okay, Granamir, make an attack roll. Oh come on, Granamir! Finish him. Oh. Granamir could finish him. Twelve. Not enough. Ah! Oh. Bites into like a leather like collar, and it's just like it just like ah oh, bats him off. Oh. Um, would you like to move? Oh shit. Oh, I need two HP to kill him. Uh, what, 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 what do I do? Where can I go? Well, you don't have to move. You can stay where you are. No, I'll stay where I am. Okay, Tremors, go. On his turn, um, technically Granamir is going to get an attack of opportunity off of him. He, you watch as something on his forearm glows for a moment, and he leaps off and plummets down towards the ground. Um, as he leaps off, Granamir gets to make an attack of opportunity. Oh, please kill him. Come on, Grandamere. Ah! 21. 21, that's a hit. Roll damage. Uh, Come on, Grandamere. D4. You need two. You need two. One. No! Three. Is it with the, pl with the plus with two? With the plus two. Okay, so as he leaps off, you see, as he leaps off, the magic from his tattoo seems to cover him and he starts to slowly fall as if descended by magic. Oh. Um, he begins to slowly fall down, like not taking any damage. Granamir sees the opportunity, sweeps down, and before he knows it, just bites into his jugular. Ah! And he just collapses, his body <laughs> instantly falls quick as it should have done, and lands on the ground before Thanks, Granamir flies you. away. Well done, matey. Um, out of initiative. The guy's still asleep on the floor, right? He's still asleep on the floor. You must now think like a basset hound. You are still <laughs> yourself. You are still yourself, as in in terms of you, you have your memories, you have your your goals, and everything is still the same. But you have literally the brain capacity of a dog. Okay. You will see a basset hound with pink fur <laughs> walk out from underneath. The Quick table. fan art of me. This tiny little pink, pink basset, basset hound, hound. like. <laughs> so you are still you, but you have to like you want food. You want yeah. attention. Yeah. Like I'm you guessing are... we're gonna know that it's him because of the whole purple dialogue. And you thing. saw like, and also you saw this flash of magic yeah. from where he was. Okay. Oh I God, need to see how long funny. this lasts. I'm gonna go. Five like, days. <laughs> we need. We should tie up the dude and quest oh, him I, oh, before he comes. Him, right? Before he is awake yeah, again. Sleep was a good idea. That's what I was just saying. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm gonna walk over to the side. So you come as back a bear, out. Of, okay. I'm just like, no, so no, no, as a bear, and I'm gonna just sniff him. So you kind of like, you gently limber, you're still like, your paws still hurt, you've pulled these things out and stuff like that. But it still aches a little bit. And yeah, you sniff him, he <laughs> smells like the gnome. I just roll on my back and just. <laughs> like belly rubs. <laughs> I'm gonna back away from him again. Okay. All right, I'm going to say that that's how long it lasts because, in terms of the wild magic, it wouldn't be based on your own concentration. Oh, God. So, okay. Uh, you'll like that for an hour. An hour? <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> God, wild damn. magic, everybody! Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Bear Laura chomps down. I won't move minis. You know where you are. Um, Granamir, like, limps over to you. <laughs> it's just like looking, it's got a deep wound along mm, its yeah. side. You just. Stay on my shoulder, Granamir. 
He just like lands there, he, like licks your ear a little bit, wraps oh. his neck around yours, wraps his long neck. His tail curls around it as well. Does, to does he him. heal? Like when I he rest, heals, does he? I would yeah. say that yeah. If you take a short rest and stuff, like he will just heal back up to full because he's only got a few hit points. So. Yeah. He, he does. He's yeah. lucky. Yeah. <laughs> Go die. He has cool. three left. Um, okay, yeah. so you're you're a dog now. That's great. I'm just on my back, just like that. <laughs> I just, I'm just looking at you. I'm not near is, you anymore. So the only two <laughs> humans are currently you two and the sleeping man. Is, is that gnome a dog? <laughs> Do I even know what a dog is? Do yeah, I, I would say yeah. you recognise it as a dog. You don't know the breed, but it looks like a weird dog, but you know dogs. That's Do I comprehend tongue, uh, common more? Yeah, you can speaking? still understand them, but again, it's kind of like... You're going, it's really hard to describe because the way the spell works is you have the form and the physical stats of the beast, you okay. also have its mental abilities, and right. the basset hound has like an intelligence of like three. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, it can understand the general meaning, but it doesn't really understand okay. the words and concepts. Yeah, sure. But, okay. but the thing is, as well, is you still have your memories, you still have your personality. Mm -hmm. You're not like a dog, you mm -hmm. are still Loban, but you just have the okay. mental function that of makes a dog. Sense. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Hands Fantastic. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna unbear. So you come out of the form. As you come out of the form, the, the movement speed reduction goes away, and the cow chops kind of like pop out of your hands like they just boop boop. Um and your health your hands are fully healed and everything else. Um and yeah. Cool. Um we should tie up that guy. So it was Three rounds, yeah. Like, but I would say so. You're gonna so I'd say four rounds by the time I've done that. So as you start tying him up, by the time you finish, he's probably gonna start coming awake because it lasts a minute. Um, so who's doing the tying up? Who's strongest? Not me. Who's strong? I'm not strong at all. Is it me? Probably you. I'm eight. No. I have eleven. So it's eight. No. Eleven. I'm really weak. Well, so, so, right. so, so give, me, give me a strength check. Just a pure strength check. So it's going to be a flat d20 roll for you. Uh, Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, you spend a bit of time. You pull some rope out of your pack. You tie him up. And just as you finish, he's like, "What's going on? What happened?" And he looks up. He's like. Oh. What, what have you done to me? Who are you? Oh, and he's like struggling, but you can see he like you've done pretty well. You've can done, we obviously Trelamar has some experience with ropes, shall we say, and has very good at tying really? knots. <laughs> oh, yes. uh, and just like he's like, oh, what? What are you trying to do? Hey, you see he's trying to rob me. When we were tying him up, could I see his arm? Yeah, he's got is a tattoo. He, is it a broken, broken sky? Tattoo, yeah. Right, listen, here, you Fair. broken sky bastard. What? Where's the tieflings? Don't know what you're fucking talking about. <laughs> Get out of my bar! Where is the tea things? <laughs> oh. Give me an intimidate check. I don't like it when you do that! Give me a fright every time! <laughs> Where is she? Swear to me! Where is she? Uh, Where is she? Uh, what am I after? Intimidation. Intimidation. 22. Well. <laughs> He's like, whoa, look downstairs! What? It's a crazy dark elf, what are you doing? Why do you care about some tieflings? Eh? What, are they family of others or something? What do you want? You're, you're messing with the wrong people. Broken Sky will kill you if you go down there. We've just fucked up the rest of your men, you twat. So <laughs> these, 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 are, these are peons. These are peons. These are, these are initiates. They're nothing compared to what you face downstairs. You fell to bloody sleep, mate. You opened the door and you pass out. What? Who? What did you do to me? I didn't do bullshit. I just that sit dog up and did. Pan just like <laughs> really flees with myself. <laughs> <laughs> you got taken down by a dog. <laughs> Oh, whoa, whoa, the others will kill you, they'll, uh, they'll get revenge. Yeah, bollocks, they didn't kill shit. <laughs> Fuck you! <laughs> I'll have your tongue, Dark Elf, I'll have your tongue! Can I, can I just, like, grab his head and, like, bang it against the wall? And knock him unconscious. Yeah, yeah you just, like, Don't you literally him pick him up, <laughs> and he just, oh, and just slumps in, oh. eyes roll. He's, like, he's helpless, like, you can pretty much do whatever you want to him, because he's completely <laughs> rendered immobile. Um, as he hits the ground, uh, you hear the sound of something metal, like in his pockets, like obviously clanging around and stuff like that. Uh, and the bar is empty. Oop. The door is currently shut. Oh, searches pockets. So on, on his, you find uh, what looks to be a, a set of two keys, uh, two heavy-looking sort of old iron keys. Um, there's probably about, I'd say, five gold on him. Um, you just I'm pocket that. that, write that down. <laughs> five gold. Uh, so yeah, a set of two keys, five gold. Um, and that's pretty much it. Okay, 
He said they were downstairs. Yep. And I've got two keys. So and he said whatever's downstairs is going to be worse. Yeah, that's just. And just... we currently have a dog with us. At that point, I kind of bark a couple of times <laughs> to kind of get the point across. Maybe. You... <laughs> okay. Uh, so you I guys could take yeah. a short rest if you wanted to as well. I would like to search behind the bar. I don't know what for. Okay. Now you don't need to make a check. The behind the bar, um, it's quite simple. There's shelving with lots of booze and glasses and things like tankards and stuff like that. Um, searching behind it, you find two things of interest. One is a pair of short swords that seem to have been in hidden sheaths. Um, ready to be accessed by whoever was behind the bar. Uh, the other thing appears to be a small iron lock box. Uh, it's currently locked. Oh. <coughs> Can I, like, hit it? <laughs> <laughs> Me, Juto, open box! <laughs> I, 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 I have just picked up some keys, you know. Put it to a cellar. I'll just I'll hold it up to try like Jingle it. <laughs> jingle, jingle, jingle it around. <laughs> I'll go over, shall I try the, key, the, the keys? The keys he had on him don't actually seem to fit a lock. Well, fuck you then. <laughs> <laughs> what is up with you today? That today? You think it's I'm the one who's having the problems today? No, it's fine. You should be looking at that table over there. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Fight you, mate. Ah, alright then. Uh, so, what would you like to do? I'm going to take a short rest. You are going to take Oh, you want to hear it. So, you want to take a short rest? I don't want to take a short rest. You don't want to take a short rest? Actually, you yeah, no, yeah, I will, because sure? then I'll get my wolf. Yeah, you get a full button and not be a dog anymore. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> so you basically, you spend an hour, like, you kind of, I mean, what do you do with the bodies? Are you just going to leave them? Are you going to try and, like, clear well, them away? There well, is a bit of blood around. Well, they're like, having <laughs> a short rest, I will watch over them, like, kind of keep an ear out if anyone's coming or Come going, and, and like, like I will pile the bodies up behind the bar. Okay. I'm sure so, so the you're, dog. like, slightly <laughs> <slightly weird. laughs> <laughs> Things like the blood. No, I'm like ignoring that. the dog. It's just like the dog's like, I'm ignoring, I'm ignoring you round. Yeah, I'm ignoring like, the your dog. Your shadow. Just, just like, heavy oh. basset claws, like, against the wooden floor. <laughs> I'm ignoring the dog. <laughs> so, uh, you do that, you kind of clear. The blood doesn't really, you, you've seen this sort of thing before. It's nothing to the atrocities that you've seen. You just pile the bodies up behind. The unconscious man, what are you doing? Leaving him where he is? He's just, just keeping an eye on him, like, yeah. you know, making um, sure he's not going to choke nobody his seems tongue to, or anything. Yeah, nobody comes by. <laughs> he doesn't show any signs of stirring. After an hour, there is a flash of brilliant prismatic colour, and the dog transforms back into the pink haired gnome. You guys can spend hit dice, you can gain things back. Granami heals up, do what you want. Um, you get your spell slots back as well, so I, I don't I think you use them. I didn't use them. No. Can I search like the dead men while they're like out? Yeah, yeah, so the dead men, um, each of them, no, you see, all of them have a tattoo. Does they're have all a wearing uh, very light looking leather armour, just like leather tunics underneath clothing. Rubber. Rubber. Okay. Oh, rubber. I've got one here. Oh. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Um, they each have a short sword and a hand crossbow uh, with a selection of bolts, and it looks like it's all been built to conceal Thank underneath you. clothing. So their, bu their bolt pouch is like tucked into what could be like a coin pouch, like a large coin pouch. Their hand crossbow actually folds in, and it can be slipped into you know a pocket and you know beneath trousers and stuff like that. Their short sword is you know just looks like a, a weapon that somebody would carry around with them. Um, yeah, any money on them? Uh, these guys would probably have. I would say after searching all four of them, they'd probably be about three gold total and it's all like loose coinage like coppers and silvers and that sort of thing yeah i'll take that <laughs> 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 pennies. Yeah, welcome to the you. the scrooge mcduck party <laughs> three with, gold you say yeah three oh, brilliant. with the um with the short rest do i get my spell slots back you do not they come back at a long rest but you can spend sorcery points to get yeah. spell slots no, back. yeah that's fine so yeah. so you've spent two hours of sleep yeah exactly so yeah. you've got two left and you've got your level threes yeah and don't forget as well you can cast your level ones as level two spells which right. ups their damage which makes them more and strong. also means you can use those more strong, stronger yeah cool. so it's about halfway through now you wanted to know what time oh is it about halfway yeah. through perfect yeah. well we'll take a quick break there guys because i need to get another drink and stuff anyway um thanks very much we'll be back in about five minutes there's no fan out this week because obviously trots out in pax east so just enjoy the break i think steve's going to try and play a cover of Halfling Camp that was on a post on the Reddit. I don't know if you managed to get that sorted. Hopefully you did. It's very cool. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, and we'll see you in five minutes. Bye! Bye.
with the bellies blown by, and listen to this tale of old with the heroes spoke behind. Hey, the master of broken silver and an adept of disguise, with heroes is when he's sick and fast, the husband fucks the lie. He's slain many a villain, be a dragon, football wizard, he's looted to chest of all the best of treasures he could find. He's the only champion of adventure for the passion. And he sings this song as he comes along with a fiddle and a pie. The grass is green, the air is clean, a sweet lass by my side. The angel bar is looking so as we surround behind. The world is full of monsters while we're laying here at the time. So let your rocks propose a toast and drunken friends of mine. A hero journey far and wide, but it riches gold and magic. But he never found a true love song, and it made him sad in time. It was her money. And I made a fair promoter there with a bow and she was mine. She apologized profusely, said she thought it was a quarrel. And she carried Tim to the nearest thing, but she nursed him back to die. Well, it fell in love directly, and she married him that night. So the half day now, they can't be up for so good of their time. The grass is green, the air is clean, the sweet lass by my side. The rain's on board, and looking so as we turn up behind. Hey, the world is full of monsters, but we're here at the side. So lift your rose, the rose and toast, and enjoy good friends of mine.
Hello! Welcome back to High Rollers. Thank you very much for coming back and joining us. Sorry it was a bit longer than a break. We had to get teas and biscuits and all sorts of things going on. But we are back now and when we had last left the party they had taken a short rest after encountering some Broken Sky agents inside the Blackmead Brewery's main floor. Um, it looked like they were going to sneak their way in until a certain pink head gnome decided to... <laughs> was impatient and decided to act uh, and trigger the series of events that led to a combat encounter, which the party breezed through, actually. Um, a couple of little minor hiccups, but nothing too bad, no major injuries, um, and nothing that couldn't be repaired. And I now... I thoroughly enjoyed that. It was nice to have a fight that wasn't too stressful. Like. Yeah. And even, to be honest, even with the guy who was asleep, I don't think it would have been that bad. Mm. I don't think it would have been that stressful. Yeah, every um, fight that we've had so far has been like, it's this been person pretty, could die yeah, right now. Yeah, it's always been on the wire, so... So, the main question for you all now, though, is what would you like to do next? Go home, mate. Um, <clears throat> so at this point, I can now that I've kind of turned back into okay. a person... You're a person again. I'm, I'm back into a person, and I'm kind of like, back. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a bit more, sort of, still quite frantic, like, because my notes clearly aren't here, and I'm just kind of like... Where else can we go? What can we do? Can we, I need to find these notes! Why were you a dog? Magic! I do like a little, little thing. <laughs> Why? Um, How is that helping us? I'm, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wild mage, uh, which, which means that, uh, that I have good spells. Gen generally, things go well. Sometimes things can go badly. <laughs> this time it was fine, so let's not worry about it. Let's carry on. My notes are more important than my magic. Okay. S stay clear of the gnome yeah, okay. in battle. Okay. Yes, good idea. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so you said there was people downstairs. So is there is there a cellar door behind the bar? There is. So cellar. you can see. <laughs> you can see there is this kind of room um, which is actually cordoned off, and there's a door, like a, a kind of interior door, um, which seems oh, to lead into a back shiver. room. I got a shiver. Sorry. Someone walked over the grave. I mean, that's a prelude for Laura's upcoming death. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why is she dead? Hmm? Why is she dead? Mm. Okay, sure. um, I'm guessing it's locked. Uh, no, this interior door doesn't seem to be. I shall open the door. You open it up. You can see it leads into a very small looking storeroom, effectively. Shelves with cupboards filled with you know things that they might need. Tankards, a couple of barrels of ale and things like that. But there's also, it's all stone and there's a stone staircase leading downstairs. You can see it seems to lead into another larger storeroom downstairs. Um, before we go, can I pick up the remaining caltrops and take them? Uh, do you have something to put them in? My hand? <laughs> <laughs> you could carry around a small handful of caltrops, but it looks like you it needs quite a lot of them. You have to spread it over a large area. Hmm. Could I... I guess my explorer's pack is hot. You could do it make it harder to get them out. You don't have something like convenient to hand, like a small bag or something. I have a little thing on my belt. <laughs> I've got a little thing on my belt. I would say you could store I? a small number of, of caltrops, yes. I'd like to store a small number of caltrops. Okay, right, right there, you have a small pouch of caltrops. I would say you've only got enough to cover about five foot square. Is the lower portion of the cellar lit or is it currently very dark in there? Um, it looks like it does have some lighting down there, uh, you're not quite sure where from but there does seem to be, it's not completely pitch black, there is obviously some lighting in there some form. Um, I think I almost everybody here has low light vision anyway so even if it was... Yeah. I was going to ask because... Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, can I yeah, listen gotta... and see if I hear anything coming mm -hmm. from the cellar? Perception Well, 19. 19. Go on. Miss Mr. Elise, Hello. now that we have dealt with Hello. the original intruders, can you not return to your disguise? Good idea, Juto. Good idea. I shall transform. Transform back into the human form. Um, and listening in, you kind of strain. Elven hearing is obviously a bit more perceptive than some of the others. You listen in, you can hear very faint sounds of things being moved around or like grumble, like very sort of muffled sounds. It's kind of hard to distinguish what it is. Things being moved, maybe people moving around. It's very muffled. Okay. Would it make more sense for me to disguise myself as the barman? But you would have to have his knowledge. Mom. If they ask you a question. No, that's true. 
like what just as a just as a, a small point I do have a strange ability I can I could basically I can stand on ceilings I can I can quite easily not too difficult I mean takes is a that a concentration guarantee, but uh, I mean is it a guarantee it's a guarantee for a while I mean I could you're not going to turn into a badger or something well I mean there is always that risk but uh, he's picked up the book <laughs> he's picked is there up the risk? book no I'm looking up I'm looking up the spell because I want to see the I, I just want to know for my own benefit the duration and stuff yeah so there's, like, there's, a, there's a concentration spell that I can do which means I can like be basically become Spider-Man <laughs> and be on like ceilings and stuff, so I could you like. You still would have to be stealthy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it still involves like I mean, stealth a bright, and stuff. Pink bright pink-haired gnome. I mean, I, you know, ceiling. it's fine. The, the pink hair's beneficial. What's your name, by the way? Uh, Lo Loban. Uh, sorry, uh, we didn't do that, did we? Loban, Loban, Loban Trogdor. I'm a Laura. Laura, nice, to, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, Drow, Trelamar, Trelamar, and uh, young, young tiefling. Miss Jing. Miss Jing, that's very, very professional. Um, yeah, I mean, you think it's Miss Jing. Like, yeah. like not Miss <laughs> Jing, you think it's Miss Jing. Okay, that sounds good. Miss Jing, yes, that's so good to meet you. Um, <laughs> maybe, maybe we should focus on the task at hand. Do that again. Should do that again. <laughs> okay. My eyes just narrow. It's good, um, it's good. I'll go in. What are you disguising? I'll, okay. I'll stick to my current disguise. I think Juto's right that... If one of these people asks me something, but will they not something? wonder why you, how you got behind? I'll just I guess say, you can the guy let him in. Yeah, the guy. <coughs> let, the, Excuse he me. He let me in. The doorman <coughs> let him in before he was sent to sleep. Yeah, yeah. They don't need to know about that part. Yeah, they, I mean, <laughs> from what we can tell, they don't know that anything has happened up here. You know, if they'd have heard anything, I'm sure they'd have come up and tried to help their friends. The sounds are muffled as well, so I imagine yeah. they're not even. Yeah, they're quite the far down. So yeah. it seems to be. See, the the staircase alone seems to go down a good sort of twenty, thirty feet. So okay. oh, before we sad. go downstairs, can I the unconscious guy? Uh, no. I, <laughs> <laughs> what? The sound Mark's making when he folds paper. It really sets me off. I hate it. I can't hear. I got fingers in my ears. Gonna get you a chalkboard. Um, it doesn't bother me. <laughs> so I know. Not you do it you want. <laughs> uh, can we get the unconscious guy? Can I tie him to like a really sturdy post as well? Yeah, so you can do. So that he doesn't move. Yeah. So you, you, he's physically tied off himself, but then you are also gonna tie him to a post. Yeah. Okay. Give me a strict check. Gag him. Oh, shit. Oh my god. I'll cut out his tongue. Zero. <laughs> Zero. I rolled a natural one, and, and my strength one. is minus one. So you <laughs> zero. <laughs> Actually, yeah, <laughs> we could do that. We could cut his tongue out, and if we need to question him, I've got telepathy. Fuck Jesus! Nice. nice. Good deal. Good deal. Um. <laughs> <laughs> what? Juto's just gonna sigh, like just a really long. Can you tie him to the post? <laughs> no, no, you tied him to the post. <laughs> oh, I did it. Yeah, yeah, you tied him to the post. It's just you haven't just done it very do it well. well. I'm gonna go over there and check the check the knots. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> like you kind of like literally just give it I a just slight tie it tug. Like, and you just like yeah, you're like, 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 like That's it. it. <laughs> you literally tuck the rope and it just falls away. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. I shall retie okay, right, the. Do so I need to do a strength strength? Yeah. Seven. Okay. Again, you tie it. You do do your best. Oh God! I mean, you. Oh, well. He's fairly skilly tied from before anyway, so this is more an extra feature. It's an extra precaution. You put like a bit of rope maybe in his mouth. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. Mister uh, Mister Trelimar, uh, can, you can you you can shape shift. You seem to sh change it to some hooded. By yes. chance, could you could you change into this chap and perhaps go down? Well, we were think I was thinking the same. Uh, but if he questions... Yeah, the trouble is, I don't have his knowledge. And if anyone asks me a question that only he knows, mm. Mm, see. then mm. we could be buggered. So, if I just play it as the current hooded man, I think we might be able to get a bit further. Okay. The people here seem used to agents coming and going. Mm. Yeah. Okay, I shall yeah. go through the door disguised as human. Okay. Human. Take all of these things. What is this human feeling? Human. And then I need to try and get this on without anything else. There we go. Alright. I'll have a look at that, yeah. These really are on the screen. They're good or not? Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Talk amongst yourselves while I change maps. Hello. How's your day going, mate? <laughs> you do that when I fill my mouth with the food. It's alright, mate. Yeah. 
I'm just eating some ginger snips. Mm -hmm. They're lovely. All right. Are you having a good D and D experience so far? Mm. So. Hi, chat. I made it in. Look, I'm here. So, mm. Trellamar, you're the first one down the stairs. You emerge in a small stone storeroom. Uh, there are various crates and boxes. You can see barrels imprinted with the Black Valley Brewery symbol. Um, and you see before you two doors. Uh, one seems to lead to the south, one seems to lead uh, continue on to the east. Uh, both are shut. Um, both have keyholes and handles. That's what you see so far. Ooh. Can I do, I guess, a perception check? If yeah, of course, yeah. To like, just what, to just listen well, just out? Like, yeah, here, through the doors. If, if okay, I so you're going to move up to each one and do a uh, perception, yeah? yeah. Uh, ten. Right, so for, wh which one? This one first? That one first, yeah. Okay, and you got ten? Yep. You listen through, you can't hear anything. Silence. Okay. So you move up to the next one? Yeah. Perception okay. check? Yep. Six. Again, you can't really hear anything through it. Mm. Okay. I shall try the key on the door I'm closest to. On the door you're closest to? Yeah. Uh, it doesn't seem to fit. But it doesn't also appear to be locked. It seems like it's open. Oh, okay. So you, so you, you go to put it in. It's obviously not there. But you then, kind of as you look at the door hinge, you can see that there's no lock bar on it. Like, it does just look like you can open it. Can I try the other door as well? Mm -hmm. So the other door does appear to be locked. Uh, and in fact, you try one of the keys that you have on you, you set it in, and you hear it click, uh, and it does seem to open up. Okay, I shall go through there, but okay. I shall uh, tell Granamir to just sort of stay Can we, around. We should, we should follow down the stairs, mm. but not go too far. Okay. Which one I have perhaps like, called up or sort of yeah. gestured that we could come forward? Come down here. <laughs> <laughs> it's really creepy. It's clear. <laughs> From due to the back, just covering it. Yeah, it seems to open up into a short corridor, stone corridor, uh, just flagstones on the floor. Uh, it seems to be well kept. Not, it's not dusty or anything. It just seems to be, you know, unused. And it turns uh, from your perspective, it would turn to the right. Okay. Um, can I do a perception check to see if there's any traps or anything? Yeah, you can do investigation or perception. <laughs> Ooh, I'll do investigation. Okay. 19. 19. There doesn't, it doesn't, it's very plain, it's very barren, there doesn't appear to be anything like There's no trip wires, there's no pressure plates or anything like okay. that. I'll just go down the corridor. Okay, so you make your way down here. Uh, you see, you all see um, Trenomar move down. I should point out that there are uh, torches and scon sconces, so just built into the walls, which oh, are so I can. currently lit. Um, they seem to be like more oil lanterns, like they're not actually like flaming torches, they're more like an oil lantern set into a small alcove. Okay. Um, one kind of shines light down here, but with your low light vision. Um, you come to another door, this one appears to be open, uh, as in not locked. Not open as in it's open, but it, you don't seem to need a key, it just seems to be an open door, like a non locked door. Uh, I'll do another perception check, see if I can hear anything. Caution. Yeah, Interesting. Wow. Something this a is new, me. a new you concept know. to this party. <laughs> I don't know what you mean. Uh, seven. Seven. Nothing. Can't hear anything. Ah, go on, just open the door. Okay. <laughs> oh, let's do it. Caution to the wind. You open the door. There is a dragon on the other side. <laughs> it seems to lead, and not a dragon, it seems to lead into an office. Um, the first thing you notice is uh, it seems to be a well-furnished uh, office and actually directly opposite the door is a large window uh, that seems to look into what you now reveal as a large brewery. Ah. If I can ever get these damn pieces of paper. Uh, so, that's there. so it looks out into a large space, uh, you can see, um, with three large metallic looking tanks with gangways uh, going up behind them, uh, loads of crates and barrels. First thing I need you to do is give me a stealth check, and then, uh, yeah, let's do a stealth check first. Uh, 22. You, as you step in, you see that actually you notice <coughs> there are men uh, walking about on the gangways, checking the valves, checking the machinery, checking boxes, and you immediately sort of like duck and move over to the side so that you're out of their visible sight range. Okay. Um, and you notice that. The office itself looks quite plush. There's a, a nice oak, dark oak te uh, desk 
bookcases behind it. There's a nice large rug on the, in the center of the floor. Um, you can see, you know, shelves with very, it looks like fine bottles of um, alcohol, like perhaps like special reserves and that sort of thing that have been labeled. Um, it seems quite nice. Can I, still keeping duck down, can I search the desk? Yeah, so you move over to the desk, um, you start browsing around it, and you can see that the desk has a, um, uh, a locked uh, drawer, like a, like a drawer that can be opened with a small key. It does seem to match one of the ones that you've got, um, and it does have just like a, a, a kind of green uh, letter writing set on the, on the top, but that's it. Nothing, in, no important documents or anything like that, but the, the drawer does seem to fit one of the keys that you have. I shall try the drawer. Okay, the so inside the drawer, uh, you find um, two things. One is a very fancy looking cigar case with covered in various jewels and fine silver. It's probably worth about 100 gold. Ooh. So a bejeweled cigar case. The other thing you find is, oh sorry, two other things you find. You find another key, okay. or another set of keys, sorry, with two keys on it. And also a hastily scrawled note, which reads, Caldas will be using the VIP suite for a meeting with several potential members in a few days. If they agree to our terms, we'll take them below for the initiation. Make sure the key for the entrance is easily accessible. I don't want to wait for you to fumble around in your desk again. Mm hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I shall go back to the others. Okay. And I shall say, I found a note. And it said, what well, he just said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what they was were the name? Calidus. Calidus. So. I will read it out again for you because I can see Kim hastily making notes over there and I know she'll want to know that she's got it right. Calidus will be using the VIP suite for our meeting with several potential members in a few days. If they agree to our terms, we'll take them below for the initiation. Make sure the key for the entrance is easily accessible. I don't want to wait for you to fumble around in your desk again. So. Perhaps as Calidus is the chap who goes upstairs. Possibly. Since he had the key to the... To the well, he's, he's unconscious now, so... Yeah, we can't ask him. Um, the brewery is just through that door next to us, uh, but there are men inside. Um, so I will advise that you guys stay here. How many men? Did you see? Oh yeah, like, you like, saw three. I saw three. Did you on see, the gangway? Did you see any teeth things? No, no. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, in that case, yeah, I think you should all stay here. I will go in. I will. Do you want to leave Granimir with us? I will leave to tell us with if you. anything goes wrong. Uh, and I shall go in, see if I can talk my way through. But if okay. not, you will have to come in and help me kill them. Okay. <laughs> Brutal efficiency, I like it. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Okay, I shall... Uh, well, uh, anyone we... else has any ideas? My notes, were they, were they in the... In the were they, were they, or did you look at the... Should uh, I look? Do you care? <laughs> <laughs> the, you can look. I mean, you're probably small enough to not be seen, I imagine. Yeah, through that window. Be, yeah. Yeah. The, the, I'll just go and verify that my notes aren't in that room. Okay. You scutter in uh, and you take a quick look around the room, you check the dress on the drawer, there's nothing, again, you don't find anything, but what you can see is what I described before, there doesn't appear to be any collection of notes or anything like that there. The doorman, did he respond positively when you asked to see Xandar? He just seemed to take it as if that what I was saying was true, he didn't question it. So be cautious because this drow must be on the premises. Yeah, so he must be down here somewhere. I come okay. back through and just say, fair enough, okay. <laughs> right, I'll go through. Can we like move in a little bit more so that we're just kind of a bit nearer? So at the moment, the child's there. Yeah. So, where do you want to be? Like just by like, the door? And yeah. He's um, going to go through it, so you can literally be right next to it if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to be right next to the door. So hiding, but not, yeah. and like alert, but not yeah, in close. any sign, like, line of sight or okay. anything. Ready. You, you open the door and it's a set of stairs that lead down. So it, because the window is actually overlooking yeah. from up high. The stairs seem to go down about 10 feet and then there's another door which again doesn't appear to be locked and just opens up before you. As you step through, um, you you see that the large, obviously the large vats that you've seen before, the gangways that lead up, you can see that there is a door um, off one of the gangways uh, which seems to lead into another room just here. Um, and patrolling around the room are four 
men. Um, I'll just use <coughs> minis for now, just to show you where their positions currently are. So, so one of them is up here, one of them is up here, one of them which was walking on the gangway seems to be making his way down, and then the one that you couldn't see because he was just beneath the window is moving a stack of boxes. As you enter through, they all seem to stop what they're doing and they're like, Oi, what are you doing in here? The closest one to you is like, who are you? Uh, I've been sent down to see Xandar. Xandar? And they seem to like look up at each other and like, don't know anything about Xandar. Who, did Calidus let you down here? Yes, when I spoke to him he said, uh, just go on down. They kind of, they're like, show us your arm. Well, and they, they seem to, they just seem to take it, like these guys don't seem to be, like they've not been told anything, they just seem to be workers or something. And they're like, oh, alright, fair enough. Uh, don't know anything about this Xandar though. Uh, Victoria might, she's up in the VIP room. I'll go speak to her. Okay, good, yeah, alright, go speak to her, she'll know what to do. And they point you, he just points up to the VIP room. Cheers, lads. Right. Okay, and you're going to head up there. So they continue like doing work and moving around and stuff. You make your way up the metal gangway and head up to this door, which you can actually see is kind of a very fine oak door. See, so the one that you, the first entrance into the brewery, um, and it just has a small bronze plaque which just has VIP written on it. I'll give a little knock. You knock on the door. Uh, you hear it. <laughs> you kind of hear like a small like like a chuckle, and this this female voice is like, "Yes, come in." Okay. So, wah! Swanky. You enter in. I just realised I don't actually have a female mini. This lady. If I can find one quickly, I will use one. If I can't, there we go, it's perfect. You see a lovely lady currently lounging on a sofa at the back of the room. This room, I mean, the previous, the brewery, First of all, it felt very much like a worker's room. There's sweat and everywhere, and it kind of stank of stale beer, and it just had this thing. This room, in comparison, is very lush. Plush <coughs> leather sofa, there's a small card table, where, like several like well, neatly organized decks of cards and poker chips and that sort of thing have been arranged. There is a small bar with, again, very expensive looking bottles of, of alcohol lining the shelves. Um, the woman seems to be wearing uh, what appears to be a kind of plain, blue looking robe, um, sash around her waist, uh, she's got very fine hair and earrings and jewellery, she currently has her legs crossed over it and seems to be writing some sort of, in some sort of book, um, and she just goes like, oh, and who might you be? I am... Iron Man. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I should come up with the name very quickly. Um, I am... Um, Rel Heath. <laughs> well, Mr. Heath, uh, what can I do for you? I'm assuming that Calidus has sent you down. And she just goes like, but let's, for the sake of argument, if you wouldn't mind showing me the tattoo. Very well. So, uh, what can I do? Normally Calidus only sends down people that have business with, with the group. I'm looking for Xandar. Xandar, you said. Hmm. Give me a deception check. So oh, don't fail me now. 21. 21. Well, uh, I don't know what information you've been told. Why are you looking for him here, if uh, you don't mind me asking? I was told to meet him here. Ah. Well, I'm terribly sorry. I think there might have been some sort of misunderstanding. I'm afraid Xandar isn't here. He's merely a third party that we work with. Uh, what perchance was your business with him? I mean, we do have a contract with him for supplies, but uh, is there something I can help you with, perhaps? No, the uh, business is purely personal. Oh, I see. Give me another deception check, actually. Do you like it? Shut up. Shut up. I can hear you whispering. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> Twelve. Well, a personal business. I must admit, quite unusual for a member of the group. Normally, such things don't get in our way. Well... I don't know where he is currently, but I could certainly introduce you to people that will know where he is. That would be incredibly helpful. Oh, why, of course, Mr. Heath, of course. And she kind of gets herself up, and you can see that she's obviously a woman who's used to very much dealing with men. She kind of gets up sultry and kind of gives you the look. Um, she kind of the moves look. past yeah. <laughs> uh, the small coffee table and round, and she's just like, now, I'm assuming as a member of this, as the group, 
You are aware of the safe house, of course. <laughs> yes! Perception check. <laughs> of course! Twelve. Okay. She's just like, well, come with me then. Uh, we'll need to head back to Calidus's office. And she starts heading <laughs> out the door. Fuck! I need like... Oh god, Psych. I can't say anything. Psych! Uh, whilst we're walking along, I shall telepathically... T- oh, I can't see any of them! Fuck! Oh, no, t- Granamere! T- t- Granamere! <laughs> Granamere! Time to go! Run! Run! Back up! Back upstairs! Okay, Granamere... I know we can't um, talk. You in your minds, you just kind of get this emotion and this... It, you don't really get uh, words, but a kind of image of like, flee, flee. And Granamere flies up to the stairs, leading out. Okay. It's like you just get this thing. I think that's our cue. <laughs> we all go, go upstairs. upstairs. So you guys all make your way up there. Um, you just as you are getting up the stairs, you hear the door open. Just as you kind of head up to the stairs, this woman leads you through, <laughs> um, and seems to be taking you into the office. Um, you make your way through. And she's just like, ah, oh, marvellous. Right, well, uh, she kind of seems to pat around and she's just like, ah, oh, of course, Calidus has the keys. I'll just have to go and fetch him from upstairs. Come with me, with you. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've got oh. the keys. Really? Yes, Calidus gave them to me. Uh, he wasn't <laughs> sure uh, if he might need something from his office, so uh, oh he said to me, uh, take my keys and um, could you get something from my office, please? Oh. Oh! Give me a deception check. Oh, fuck. Uh, eight. <laughs> she's like, oh, well. And then she steps back and she's like, please, if you wouldn't mind, open up the, 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 open up the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> well then. Uh, I'm going to use suggestion. <laughs> okay. Uh... What do you suggest? As in, like, you need to suggest something. Yeah, to uh, I suggest that you open <laughs> the, the safe okay. house thing. So, what's your spell save DC? Uh, it's on your spell sheet. Spell sheet. So it's the top one, so it's what I have to save again. Uh, 14. Her eyes kind of glaze over for a moment, and she's just like, oh, yes, that would be much more sensible, wouldn't it? <laughs> And she <laughs> bends down, she pulls back the rug, and you, she now reveals a trap door that was in there, and she goes, ah, oh, there we go. Typical. Thank you. Oh, you have the keys, please. Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> um, as you go down to open it, she just reaches out and touches you on the shoulder. I need you to make me a wisdom saving throw. Oh, fuck! Seven. Seven. You feel your body... <laughs> Paralyze and lock into place. Shit bags. And she just, she basically is just like oh, shit bags indeed. Now, Mr. Heath, I do believe that you've not been telling me the whole truth, now, have you? And she now, as she puts her hand, she brings her hand down. You can feel it kind of tracing on your back, and then it passes through the cloak and the illusion. Um, the, as she kind of dispels it, the illusion fades, and she's just like, "Well, how very interesting. What do we have here?" Now you can't move. But you can still use telepathy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but she's just like, I think the resh should have a word with you. Uh, I'm afraid it won't be a very pleasurable experience. And she pulls your paralyzed body back, and she takes, she rummages through your pockets, gets the keys, opens up the trap door, lifts it open, and is basically going to start pulling uh, it down. I shall mm-hmm. telepathically talk to her. Is that it? Uh, okay. To her. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Madam, I haven't. I, um, I apologise that I have not been uh, completely honest with you. Um, although I do admit that I actually was looking for Xandar. As you can see, I too am a drow. Uh, Xandar is a known uh, is known to me, and uh, I was trying to track him down. Uh, I've been following him. Okay, so first two things. The first thing you need to do is you need to make another wisdom saving throw because technically you can make it at the end of each round. So okay. each kind of like bit of talking is you can make another saving throw. Ooh, 18. 18. Oh, your body suddenly unparalyzes. Um, but this, as you kind of like, as you do that, you can now look at her and she is 
pointing what seems to be some sort of wand, like or some sort of like arcane focus in your direction. She's just kind of holding you at gunpoint, effectively. She just has this, and you can see it crackling with arcane energy. And she's just like, well, that's an interesting power you have there, Mr. Heath. A very interesting asset. Now, you're looking for this Xandar. Now, what I said was also true. He's only a third party. He's a contractor for us. But you've displayed some remarkable skills making your way down here, and I must admit, you must have used some sort of magic on me to get me to reveal this entrance. I don't suppose you're looking for a job, are you, Mr. Heath? The Broken Sky is always looking for new recruits, especially ones with as talented and versatile skills as yourself. I'm very interesting. Trail turns. Uh... <laughs> Well, yes. Uh, I'm I'm open to uh, to any employment. Really? Yeah. Well, I must warn you now. The Broken Sky isn't just some riffraff organization. We are quite dedicated, and there are certain consequences if you don't agree with our terms. It's more of a, shall we say, tool for ensuring loyalty. I think you should speak with our leader for this current group that we have. His name is Varesh. He's a bit, mm, shall we say, intimidating at first, but he'll appreciate a talented individual like yourself, like myself. Shall we? And she gestures towards the trap door. Of course. I will go down. You start heading down. Um, she kind of holds it down and starts going down the ladder. She pulls the trap door, locks it, and starts Oh, heading. bollocks. <laughs> Right, okay, at this point, you guys are all with Granamir. Oh dear. Um, hmm. You have heard a woman's voice and Trelmar, like, walking together. You hear them go through the doors, and then that's it. That's, that's all nice you hear as they go. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm a dead man. <laughs> just Kim, join him. Kim's just join. so annoyed. Oh, right, I think, I think I'm not right. annoyed. <laughs> I, just, I just know who Varesh is. Do you? Yeah, we've heard that name. You've heard that name Many before. times. He was yeah. one of the sub-leaders. Uh, stop talking to him. Sorry. You can talk to me. Uh, what have would I you have to do? Has yeah, he would have heard If you that. don't remember it, like... Oh, I'm probably, if you've got I'm notes, more notes, Mac. If you've got notes, then that's fine. You can remember it. It was back when we were back in... Um, Faden. 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 Oh, yes. So, what would the rest of you like to do? Like, as I said, you kind of hear this. You hear them leave, like, the storeroom that you were previously in. The door's uh, yes. shut behind you. So, yeah. Uh, you do recognise the name as being a sub-leader. Riss yeah. for us. Yeah. Another name? He was, we didn't we speak to him. Was he the one <laughs> we didn't speak to no. him. No, no we, we spoke were, to the we other two, didn't we? We were trying to speak to Reese, Reese. but she sent us Fixanus' dead body. Oh, wow, yeah. We have no contact with Varesh, but all we've done is heard a name. Yeah. Mm. So all we've heard of Varesh is his name. Dimitriv, yeah. pleading. Pleaded. I don't know. And mentioned Varesh, Reese, and Denon. Yeah. Denon's the politician, though, at Briarcrest. So, three of you, anything? Or are you just going to wait? Do we know anything? Like I said, like you hear this woman's voice in Trell, you hear them leave the storeroom towards the office that Trell and I had come from, and then you don't hear anything. Granimar just kind of seems to look at you. He seems quite nervous. You get this image in your mind of worry and, and okay. fear, but you don't. it doesn't seem to be like he's trying to message you anything. At this point, do you want to do anything? Like You are currently like down a ladder. Yeah, I don't know what I what I can do to, to, to. So you get to the bottom yeah. of this ladder and you find yourself in a small square room uh, with two doors. But this looks very different to the room you, you were just in. This is old stone. Um, the it looks more like an old catacomb. Like you can see what probably was once burial chambers mm. or like sarcophagi, like in the walls. But they've been cleared out and they're now empty. Um, they've just been storing items. You can see things like rope, climbing equipment. You can see weapons have been stored here. Um, things like casks of oil. It just seems to be used as like a, a storeroom. Um, you get to the bottom and then Victoria, this woman, kind of descends down next to you, um, and she's like, ah. Oh, now, I think that Varesh is up in the temple ahead. Um, we should go, if you wish. Uh, how far am I away from Granami? Am I too far away to contact him? You don't know. You can try. Yeah, I'll, I'll <coughs> try and try and sort of... Okay. Work this out. Uh, Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, what do you do? What do you say to Granami? Uh... 
help him downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, you can kind of give him a rough location, like yeah, you kind of I'm predict down, where, I'm, like in I'm, the office I'm and stuff like that. Underground, like under the rug. Okay. Granamir, to the rest of you, like leaps off of Laura's neck and starts flying and flies down back in towards the storeroom. Okay, follow Granamir. Mm -hmm. So you start following Granamir. Granamir flies the way down. He fires. You follow him all the way through. Um, he can't open this door, so he's just flapping at this door, like scratching at it with his claws. Okay, um, you open it up, and he flies in, um, and he just literally lands on the ground, and you can see that the rug has been pulled back, and there is a trap door, and Granamir just starts like clawing at it, like. Wah, wah. Okay. And you see pictures of Trelamar. You see the image of him flash in your minds from 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 Granamir. So I'll say you were doing that as you were going downstairs, so they've got a bit of time before I come back to you. What do you guys like to do? I just go up to the trapdoor and try and open it, see if it's locked or not. It's locked. It looks like it's been locked from the inside. Can I use anything in my uh, tinker or press digitation <laughs> to do unlocking? Ooh. I would say you give me a... Give me an intelligence check, but you can add your proficiency bonus to it. So I think you're going to add plus five. So you're going to make a d20 and add five for me. 19 plus five, 19, 24. 24. You are like, oh, you've just remembered. You have just the device. Ah! <laughs> and you pull out a tinkering thing that you'd made once. It was kind of an experiment, mm -hmm. um, but you were going to use it as a way to, it's kind of like an assistant to like hold things, mm -hmm. but it has tiny little arms. And yeah. you put this over the lock and you kind of get it going, and then using your mage hand and press digitation, you mm -hmm. try and manipulate the lock from the other side. Um, <laughs> and it, these little arms go through. Now I need, I need you to give me another roll, uh, okay. but just your intelligence this time, so plus three. Right, okay. Um, and uh, you can, seven. Seven. So you could <laughs> use your Tides of Chaos and give yourself advantage on that roll as yeah, well. Yeah, let's do that. So that, means that you, yep, so it means okay. that you are going to trigger a, a Surge next spell, but... Yep, actually it's going to be a... Plus three, did you say? Plus three. Seventeen. Seventeen. You just hear, like, he puts this little device, and you can see, like, these weird mechanical arms come out, and it's like... And then he's, like, waving his hand around in magic. You hear it unlock. Yes. Cool. Okay. But remember, next spell you cast, automatic surge. Yeah, I'll try and I'll write it down. So, you hear the click. Okay. Let's just be quiet. We don't know what's going on. So while they're upstairs... Uh, Victoria's just like this way, and she points you towards a door. I, I have to draw the map for this, so I won't do it for now. But there's basically two doors, one which leads to the west and one which leads to the south. She points you towards the southern door, gets the keys, opens the door, and lifts open, and you can see it moves into a long corridor. Um, stone that seems to go down quite far, and again, it's got you can see it's got these ancient sconces, but this time, instead of actual light, there is magical light emanating off of them, just very faint, enough to give it a very slight glow, um, and it seems to lead quite far down, and the two of you start making your way down this long corridor. Uh, she constantly moves behind you, like she always makes sure you're in front of her. She's not, she has this wand or this arcane focus at the ready, and you can see it crackling with energy, but she's not like actively praying, yeah. pressing against your back, she's just ready in case something goes wrong. What would the three of you like to do? So the thing, the door's just been unlocked. I'm walking. Open the door. <coughs> so Elora pulls it open, the trap door opens, and you see it leads into a ladder leading down. And you can just see a faint light source at the bottom. It looks oh, to be about 40 up. foot down. Can we hear the voices or anything, like how far anyone Very is? Very faint echoing, but you can't make out what they're saying. I'm like hesitant to go first. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, door's well, open! Grandamere. Uh, Granamir actually would, in, as soon as that trap door's open, Granamir flies down. Okay, fine. I climb down. So you start climbing your way down, you I guys are going to follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I'm going to have to draw something. So, oh, I don't have my pens, damn it. Right, no. fear of the mind. So, you make your way down this ladder. Um, you two, you started moving away. You were about 30 foot down a corridor. 
Uh, stone walls, again, like very, this place feels ancient. There's heavy dust. You can see that there are cobwebs and it, it smells old. It has that musky scent of like ancient stone. It looks very worn and weathered. Um, parts of it seem broken almost as you make your way down. The three of you make your way down the ladder and you arrive in this small stone room. See the same thing, very worn, ancient looking stone. There is two doors, one to the west, one to the south. The southern one is open and 30 feet ahead of you, you can see um, uh, a woman in blue robes who seems to be walking behind Trelamar, his disguise gone. Um, give me stealth checks, the three of you, just to see if she hears you. D20, right? D20 plus your stealth bonus, which is on your skills list. Yeah. 18. 12. 14. 14. Uh, it'd be versus her passive perception rather than anything else. So you got a 12, did you say, Kim? 14. 14. Um, she, the woman walking behind you seems to stop turn around and sees the three of you. Her eyebrow kind of raises for a moment, she looks back to you, and then she turns, she's like, who are they? Uh, so you hear like this woman, you can faintly hear like her speaking to Trelamar as she like looks behind you, but she can see that she's kind of facing her body so she can, she's literally turning her head between the two now. So she, she's, she sees all three she of us. Sees all three she's, of she's, right. she, it seems like she heard Juto as she was moving, her tail just caught like a bit of stone um, and a, a, one of the supplies fell off of it like a dagger and it just tinged on the ground and she t whipped her head round and, and saw it's now sees the three of you in this room. And close enough for me to use sleep again, but it would be an automatic surge. Yeah. What you, what'd you say? Uh, no idea. Deception check. Twenty-three. Twenty-three. She's just like, very well. Time to prove yourself to the broken sky, Mr. Heath. She turns around to you and she's like, she raises this arcane wand focus. She kind of like looks at the three of you and she's like, I don't know who you are, but you're not with us. Leave now or die. I think, I think sleep straight away. So you literally yeah, just, yeah. without thinking, yeah. the magic comes out. Yeah. Okay, so you need to write, roll 5d8 and add it all up for me. Meanwhile, I get to roll and see what happens. Did not expect <laughs> this at all. Once again, One. Trelamar proving that I can't Four. predict anything. Oh, the Six. unpredictable Trelamar. You are literally Ten. the unpredictable Trelamar. I love it. 11, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19. Yeah, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. <laughs> 19? 19. It's not plushing anything, is it? No. You can't. You throw the magic no out, um, and you no. like she kind of like her eyes <laughs> blink for a moment. She shrugs it off, and she just looks at you, and you see this look of like, right, enemy. I need you to roll me a d10. As he throws this magic out, it kind of forms this kind of sand-like mist. And it shimmers with the same prismatic, sh like rainbow colours that you saw when he transformed into a dog. Yeah, and this surge of magic flashes over that's him. That's a ten, right? Uh, yes, that's yeah. a d10. Yeah. Well, but the, the automatic surge has happened as well, hasn't that's, it? This that's, is this is what roll I'm doing the d10. Right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Five. Five. Uh, <laughs> um, should I adjust it? Because you're a no. Yes, yes, I would. Um, you feel a flash of magic, and you feel a sudden vigor and youth return to you. You, you de-age by, I'm going to say, 20 years. Okay. So, you are, so where you were previously, you are now like a young adult gnome again. Yeah. Like the great, the wrinkles disappear. Your your hair becomes more voluminous. Your beard grows. Like you, you feel like a strapping young man again. Um, uh, as you just and this magic, and she just turns. She's like ah. Uh, initiative, everybody. I tried to say it. I tried. You did. It was a good effort. God damn. What was the initiative? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what we're It's fine. Cool. Because I thought if I made her sleep, then she, then she wouldn't be able to like shout out and go, ah, bastards, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. Bear with me, guys. I've just got to, <laughs> I've got to go off a very rough map I drew earlier. We're we playing D&D too fast for you, Mark. Yeah, no, you really <laughs> are. <laughs> Christ. 
unpredictable Trillamar strikes again. Sorry. No, it's good, because this is makes great game. It's just, God, I've got to find all my notes and stuff. Right, okay, so that's that. So I need I you mainly. <laughs> I didn't expect you to get this far with your descent. Well, no, did I? No, it was like, was honestly, good, yeah. like, I, like, it was like constantly really uh, back and forth of like, she was suspicious, but then you were like, oh, she's like, maybe he's, maybe he does mean what he said. Then the telepathy thing, was like, no, that's really, like, yeah, fuck enough, yeah, she would. Right, okay, so, Elora initiative. 20. Trillamar. 15. Loban. Nine, oh, sorry, 16. 16. Juto. 18. Okay. Elora, once again, top of the initiative, you are initiative queen. Um, you literally see her eyes, like, after the spell happens, she looks like she's about to attack you. Am I allowed to say anything? Like, well, do, I mean, do, I, do I have to no, wait This is the whole, because it's your reaction, like, you're it's about to say something, and, it'll, oh, right, and but, everything else okay. goes ahead. So you literally summon your hands in the air. Moonbeam. Summon the moonbeam. Summon the moonbeam. <laughs> summon the moonbeam. Oh dear, books out again. We're in a corridor, right? You are in a long, uh, it is a, uh, fifth, it is a 20 foot wide stone corridor. So they're about 15 constitution feet Constitution They are 30 feet away from you. She makes a constitution saving throw? Yep. Is that, because I was reading up about this, because they did some clarifications on Moonbeam and stuff. When a creature enters the spell, right. Well, if, so, if it's in it for the first time. N but this is, sorry, this was clarified in Wizards in their rules, Sage rules. It doesn't go off now, but it will trigger at the start of her first time. Ah, oh, that's it, it did it for balance purposes, because you're not meant to get double damage out of it, effectively. But you basically, the boom, the beam starts coming down, and when it, on her turn, it will hit her and unable to save her. Um, so that starts happening. So you, so that's your action. Do you want to move? She's about 30 feet away, or are you going to stay where you are? In no, this little room? Stay okay, so you start bringing down the beam. Um, it, her turn next, so it doesn't really matter. So I make a constitution saving throw. Nope, failed. Uh, so 2d10. Uh, four. This radiant energy seems like, ah, she strikes her, she's just like, ah, damn you. And she's just like, ah, you have made a mis you have made an enemy of the wrong people, fools. Her wand comes back and it crackles with lightning. <laughs> A line of lightning streaks down the corridor. I need all three of you to make dexterity saving throws. Uh, 16. 20. 20. Wow. Uh, Dex saving throw. So it's 7 a, plus 6. Plus, uh, 13. 13. Okay. Um, you are... You're all taking half damage. This bolt of lightning strikes down the middle of the corridor. You all manage to just barely pull out of the way, but the scorching heat of the lightning still strikes streaks against you. Uh, this is the spell Lightning Bolt. 8d6 damage. That's 10, 14, 16, 17, 18, 26, 30. 30? All of you take 15 points of damage oh. unless you have lightning resistance. But... Uh, so you w literally watch her as she summons this bolt of lightning just down the corridor, striking all three of them who were stood near the door. Just... Sheet. Yes. Uh, the, in her, in, in for her, then for her movement, she will dart behind you. She's like, uh, come on! And she like starts... She moves 30 feet back down to the corridor. <sighs> it is... Uh, Juto's go. Well, this is going to go one of two ways. <laughs> I wish to join the broken sky. Okay. She, like, looks at you, like, from down this corridor. She... I, I hold my arms out, like, I'm not raising weapons, she I'm not doing anything. She drops the I'm like, well, it's still in its shoe, so I'm not okay. touching it. I'm just not, like, hands out. I want to speak. Just, um, okay. All right, hold that. That's what you're doing, just because other people have got to go, and I want to see what they do. Logan. So you see Juto just do this. She's like, I want to join the Broken Sky and holds her hands up. What do you do? I'm confused. Um, <laughs> I, well, I was going to just pass her in the face, but... Um, 
What would your character do? Is the main thing you need to think about. Actually, that's a good point. Hmm. Um, I follow Juto's lead and put my hands up. Okay. So you're probably assuming it's like a ploy or something. Yeah. Just yeah. Like, oh, okay. Trail them off. I will hold my hands out, ready to do my Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Pointing towards, towards them. Point towards them, but okay. I'll say, what do you think? Do you think we should, should uh, trust them? Sh- uh, okay, so that's what you're doing? Yeah. Okay. Elora. You could run. The moonbeam is still active, so it's still it's in that active same space. As long as yeah. Although concentration check actually is a concentration spell for the lightning bolt damage. DC that, ten. Was that FM? Yeah. Well, it's, it's any time you take damage. So Wait, add your, it's a constitution, constitution. saving throw. Constitution. Uh, I think you have plus 12. two, right? Yeah, that's fine. You it. You, although you've got stabbed by the lightning, you've got still got concentration if you want to continue it or move it or do anything. I'm gonna leave it up, but I'm just gonna hold my hands up. Uh, okay, so at this point, she's just like, don't try and play me a fool. The gnome just tried to put me to a sleep, and this one just cast a spell on me. But I have not attacked you, and I'm holding up my arms even though you attacked me. You are clearly with them. Don't try and make play me for some fool. You're together. I am only using them. Korak is my enemy, my sworn enemy for life. He enslaved me when I was a child and murdered my parents. I wish revenge. I wish to join your cause. She seems very conflicted for the time being. Um, what would she do? She, for her action, so she says that to you, she touches herself uh, and she heals herself for a small amount of damage that she took from Moonbeam. She just, she looks to you, she's like, do you know, you said that you don't know these people. I've never seen them before. You could clearly kill me from where you stand, especially because I do not make any act to move. That alone should show you how honest I am. I am here to bring down Korak. One of you two, ones that attacked me first. You gnome, why did you cast these spells if you're supposedly with this tiefling? She says that she's using you. Are you here to kill me as well? Um... Forgive an old man, I, 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 I miss... I miss Judge the situation. I, I thought going to sleep would be a nice thing to do right now. <laughs> Give me a deception check. It's not deception. He's like no, you know. that is a lie. What he just said. He reacted because he wanted to put us to sleep to avoid a shout out Seven. to guards and stuff. Yeah. It's just like very well, Tiefling. Subdue these two. If you're truly, if you wish to truly join the Broken Sky, subdue these two, and we will put them in jail while we dis- deal with you and this one. I would do as she says. She is clearly stronger than the three of us. Mm. We can solve this alive, not dead. Enough talk! Fine, trusting Juto. Okay. Good luck with that. (laughs) So you're gonna literally bind them? Yeah. Hands behind. Okay. So Juto comes around and binds the two of you. Not very well. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's a good point. Are you gonna try and make it so it's easy for them to get out? I'll make it so that they are like a trick one they are or... bound and like but and is there a way to make it so Victoria can't like I mean yeah you can basically try and do like a trick knot so that they can literally loose it but it would look like it's their arms are tightly tied together and like obviously these two will have to play along but would I have to do a throw on it I would or? say a dex check yeah give dex. me a, dex, a dexterity check yeah so just d20 plus your dex and that'll be to see how much of a trick thing it, it could be that you actually just bind them but otherwise it yeah. will just be a thing uh, seven. Seven, okay. So, Juto binds your arms behind you, and then she's just like, very well, tiefling, come with me. And she like turns to you and she's like, watch my back, I don't trust this tiefling. She trusts you, though, <laughs> fucking weirdly. Um, she leads you further down the corridor. Um, um, can I swig a potion of healing while we're doing this, or is that not the time? Uh, do you want to try and do it sneakily, or do you want to be obvious about it? I want to cast Cure Wounds on myself. (laughs) Uh, You can't, your arms are bound. You need to be able to move your hands to cast spells. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You can shape shift and then use your bonus actions to heal yourself. (laughs) 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 I don't know if that would go down that well. 
Please don't. Uh, no, I'm not going to do it now. <laughs> okay. So um, she leads you if you follow, and like she literally, she waits for you to move past her. And I'm then trying she to act as passively you. as possible, like yeah. really, like not aggressively. She waits like. for you to move past her, and then she says to you, she's like, "You take the take one of them." move forwards with them, make sure they don't go anywhere. She seems to completely trust you now, because you've not turned on her so far, so Can you've completely won her allegiance. Can I just make an out-of-character check Yeah, of course, you? yeah. Um, my spell that I have for Shocking Grasp, yeah. if I did that whilst I was walking past her, would that immobilise her, or could she still do stuff? No, so it, unfortunately it's not like a, like a taser, like you would just render unconscious, it would do damage and she can't take reactions, it slows her reactions down, but she can, she still, can still cast spells okay, and stuff no, like that. Do anything also, then. the problem <laughs> is, is <laughs> while your hands are bound, you can't cast any spells, oh, because crap. all spells okay. require you to actually like do gestures and things like that. Okay. Same with like if you're bound, if you're gagged, you can't do it as well, because you're actually speaking words and okay. stuff like that. Um, so the, you are basically led. She leads you further down the corridor, which turns off to the right at a T-junction. She leads you down that. Ahead of you, you can see an ancient-looking portcullis, but there is also a shoddy wooden door to the side. Um, she gestures for you to open it. She's like, open that door. I moved open the door. She opened the door. You lead them in, and you lead them into what is clearly um, a kind of part jail cell, part torture chamber. Um, inside, you can see that a part, portion of it has been cordoned off by iron bars. Inside the, the cells are two very badly injured, they look like they've been tortured for days, two tieflings. Um, there is also a human man who's wearing uh, like a blacksmith's leather apron, he has uh, a mask kind of over his face, I and mean, then he seems to be arranging a series of torture tools. Um, it's just like, the, the woman, the Victoria woman is just like, Horace, open up the cell, we've got two more prisoners to put in. Keep an eye on this one, and she points towards you, Juto. Um, he's like, oh, very well. Two more, eh? I look forward to having these lot later. He like comes over, he opens it with a big rusty iron key from his belt, opens it up. The two tieflings look at you, and seeing that you seem to be working with them, they just look at you quite disgustedly. Um, very, very unhappy and disgusted. Uh, you two are basically shoved into this cell. It's locked, and then you just hear it lock. Um, the woman turns to you and you, so Trelamar and Juto, and is like, you two will come with me and speak with Varesh. Horace, keep an eye on them. Don't touch them until I return. He's just like, oh, very well. And then he starts heading off. You are led outside the room, um, and you are taken somewhere else. The torturer eventually, he hangs up his tools, kind of gives you one last look, and then leaves the room as well. Um, and the two of you are left with the things. I need you both to give me dexterity checks to see if you can get out of these binds that you two did. Just straight dexterity. Just straight dexterity roll. Fifteen. Fifteen. Six. Plus six. Just plus one or a plus, Yeah, no, yeah, it would be your plus. But, um, so. You struggle like it seems like the binds that you two put on you. She didn't do the knot properly enough, mm -hmm. and it's not actually a trick. You, on the other hand. You wiggle, you you know, you're quite dexterous, you manage to get your fingers through, you unhook part of the knot, you manage to like wear it free, and pff, you manage to get your, your bindings off. The two tieflings look at you and they're like, Oh, we are sorry, friends. We are sorry that you must endure what we have. They will not be pleased if you remove those bindings. And you can see he's like, he's he no, they're badly bad. They're, they are, they're not bound, but they look so weak from just injury. They've got cuts and lashes. One of them looks like he's nursing broken ribs. But you can see that they've been badly burned in places, even through their tiefling skin, which seems to be resistant to, to fire and, and burning. Um, they seem quite badly beaten up and quite badly tortured. Um, uh, and yeah, but you managed to get yourself free. Things have gone quite dark. Yeah. Can I do the Australian? No. no. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Cam is. Do I'm kind of glad Cam isn't here. Yeah, I know. It We'd be dead. A little something. We'd be dead. Like yeah. So what would so Elora and and Lo Loban? Yeah. Do you guys want to do anything? Do you want um, to talk to these guys? Like just because these things are going to be a bit different. So can I, I get what? just. Go on, sorry. No, 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 go. I'll try and double check if my Tinker's kit is a one-use item or if I can try that unlock thing again. Um, so you've got that thing with you, mm -hmm. and I would say, because uh, the, the Tinker's kit is, as a gnome, you can make like a clockwork toy and mm -hmm. stuff. I kind of reason that maybe you made something a bit more different, that's why yeah. you make the check. You've got that. To make something else would take a long time, but that thing you can use, because it requires you to actually use magic to properly unlock stuff. Like, it's normally yeah. meant to just like hold items and things. Like it's yeah. kind of like a little arm that you can use to hold, hold books and stuff like that. But you've actually okay. used it as almost like an impromptu thieves tool. So I'll just say, Aura, 
free me and I can, I can get this bastard door. Do we really want to go outside? We need to trust Juto. She's I... got a plan. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hear that. If, little one, if you can escape, please, we must get out of here. I cannot stand another day of what they have done to us. So, like, you, one of them weakly comes up to you, and you can see him desperately trying to pull these bindings off you. Like, he's just like, I'll, I'll take his bindings off. Because we have, we have two options, don't we? We can either, like, set up an ambush for when the guy comes back, or we can just sort of pretend and stay. But either way, will he notice if the door's unlocked? Is it, like, visible, like, big, like, or is it, like, uh, a it, little... No, I mean, it, like, you can unlock the door and just leave it open. Like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a keyhole, it's like a padlock, okay. so it, it, he wouldn't know. So unlocking it doesn't necessarily have to reveal... But it would, you unlocked. would probably have to, like, push it slightly ajar, okay. I would say, is the only thing. But that would mm. be much harder for him to, to yeah. spot if he wasn't yeah. looking for Okay, so if that's, if that's, I think... Yeah. Well, you do, do what your character does. So right. if you want to try that? If Laura unbinds I'm me, trusting that's... trusting Juto. Well, she's already, unbound. Really she's already unbound. She's already unbound you. Right. Alora's already come okay. over and released your binds. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to High Rollers, Kath! Yeah. Important decisions! Oh, man. Consequences! Calf sequences. Calf sequences, yeah. So, yeah, what are you going to yeah. do, bro? This is really. This is really um, what would the character do? Uh, well. The guiding light. I mean, the, the character would want to help these people. There you go. So. That's I guess decision. I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna do that. Okay, um, so give me another intelligence to add five to this because you got your tinker's proficiency. Uh, ten. Okay, with the plus five. Yeah, plus five plus five. You, the the lock seems different to the one before. The arms don't quite reach all the way through, okay. but it's really tricky to try and unlock this thing from the time being. Maybe if you keep at it, you might be able to, mm -hmm. but it is gonna take a bit of time. And like you're probably talking like an hour of very fine tuning. You're okay. like ever so slightly getting it out, getting tinker's kit. You un you know, unhoist the things. Question, are we going to be in here for a while? Because if we are, then we can take a short rest. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's, it's up to you guys, you don't know. You don't know how long you're going to be in here. I mean, I might drink my, my potion if I, if I, because I've got 11. That's the one thing is like, it seems like in the haste of like the unexpected situation, nobody stripped you of your gear or equipment. Yeah, okay. So you still have healing potions, More you can magic. drink that if you want. Yep. Yeah. I don't have any healing skills or anything, I just have a potion, so yeah, I'm, do you want I'm, to drink just, that? I'm gonna drink that. Okay, you heal. Glug, 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 glug. Uh, four, six hit points. Okay, that's not bad. 17 now. Right, you have a think about whether you want to take a short rest and what you want to do. I'm you two. cast Cure Wounds on myself. Okay, you cast that, so D8 plus your wisdom. <clears throat> you two, uh, Juto and Trelamar, this woman in the blue robes, blonde hair, leads you out of the jail cell and back into the corridor that you were in. She leads you further down, uh, back the way you were originally going. Uh, eventually she stops you and she's like, wait, and has to dispel the glyphs. And you can now see as she points out that there is a faint bluing glow on the ground. She waves her hand, and the glyphs dissipate, and then you basically she's just like, I've given you permission to enter, and then you step over it and then she waves her hand and they begin to glow again. Um, Granamir is technically with you. With me. Mm -hmm. um, Can I say to Grandamir, are they okay? Are they in danger? He, you basically get this sense from Grandamir, like, you know, worry. He, he can't project anything complicated. He's kind of just like, worry. You know, how are you effectively? Like, yeah. are you okay? That's like, yeah. Yeah. He, he's like, you get this image of like, okay. Like, okay. you see Trelamar, he's not injured. That's basically it. You can get you get very basic messages from Granamir. You two are led further down this corridor to a massive pair of stone doors, double doors, ancient looking, both emblazoned with very strange symbols of serpents um, and hooded figures and crooked daggers. It doesn't look friendly. Um, the the woman that hands goes up to the doors. She holds her hand against them, closes her eyes, and then they begin to open. You then step into what must have once been a large audience chamber. You can see p stone benches all arranged, almost like pews, but kind of angled towards a central platform, which seems to raise up uh, a few short steps to a, uh, a squared off platform um, with two large hooded figures looming over it, uh, both with serpentine looking faces, uh, kind of snake-like men under these large hooded shrouded stone statues. Standing on the platform, you can see a tiefling um, 
bound, another male tiefling. He's wearing a loose tunic, loose trousers. He's bound, he looks beaten up, but he still has a look of defiance in his face. He stands quite proudly. Next to him is a blue dragonborn. Imagine a hulking, seven-foot, muscular, male-like shape with a, a, dra dra a, a draconic-looking face and head. Blue, glimmering scales, clad in shimmering plate armour. Uh, you can see that at his side is a large, long, jagged sword. Um, in, on, on his other belt, you can see a, a short, uh, probably some sort of short blade. He seems to be speaking to the tiefling, and you can see that now there are a number of other members, all wearing hoods, but all wearing emblazoned with the broken sky symbol. They seem to be watching. Uh, the dragonborn man looks at the tiefling. He's like, "So, little tiefling, what will you still try and stand defiant against us? I give you one last chance. Serve me and the broken sky, or I will send you to the abyss." The, the, the tiefling looks up. He doesn't seem to spot you two yet. Like his vision seems quite bloody. One eye is really badly bruised and bloodshot. He just looks up. And he looks up at the dragonborn. He's like. I will never serve your kind again. I came to the Talisval to find my freedom. Cora gave it to me. I spit in you. And he just spits in his face. The Dragonborn looks at it, raises up a hand, wipes it off, licks it, just grabs the tiefling by the chest and he's like, huh, then say hello to the demons for me. And throws him into a pit which is suspended in the platform and you just watch this tiefling drop. So, brothers, sisters of the Broken Sky, we have lost a valuable asset today, but our war against the Republic still stands, and our princess will ensure victory. Now go and do the work of our great, our great majesty. Be gone, and he gestures, and you can see all the others seem to get up and start heading back towards the door that you just came through. He glances up. Ah! Victoria, what have you brought me, more prisoners? As he looks over at you, she just goes, no, Varesh. These two, uh, one of them infiltrated our base. He seemed quite keen to meet with Xandar, and he's shown great aptitude. I believe that he would make a fine agent for us. This one, and she gestures towards you, Juto, claims she wishes to join us, but Korak is her sworn enemy. She wishes to join us, and even turned on her allies that she said she had used to reach us. Hmm. Ah, interesting. I have not seen such backbone in a tiefling, such hmm, initiative, shall we say. Not since my days of Bressaras. <laughs> Very well. I shall hear them speak. You shall watch the door. Step forward, tiefling. Step forward. So, a child. <laughs> what does a child have against the hero of the Republic? He murdered my parents in front of me. Mm. A sad tale, but not an uncommon one in Brasaris. Are you sure it was the champion? It was a dragon born in gold and red. <laughs> it was the champion. Mm. Perhaps this anger would be a useful tool. But would you serve me? <sighs> An enslaver of your kind. It's been long since I have been in Brasaris, exiled from my homeland. Would you serve me and our princess? May I ask why you were exiled? <laughs> that is my business. I do not ask you of yours that much, but I suppose I was a great warrior. I was the best. I served the army of the Chromats with loyalty. And yet, because of my ambition, because I tried to do what so many other Chromats have done, I was punished, kicked out into the sands like a dog, like a useless metallic. Ah! He spits. But, Felania, our glorious majesty, she will give me my chance at revenge. So perhaps I will offer you yours. But your loyalty must be tested. Tell me, who are these that you brought here? These ones that you have used? Why did they seek us out? Are they agents of the Republic? They are not. 
they come to the capital for reasons of their own. The gnome, I do not know well. I literally met him this morning. He looks for notes on the lightfall that was stolen from him. He kind of looks, he's like, mm, Victoria, do you know of this? She's like, yes, we had one of the thieves' guild obtain them. We learned of this scholar. Apparently, he's quite the expert on the lightfall. Mm. Perhaps they will be of use to her majesty then. And what of the other one? Who is it? And Victoria's like, an elf. She seemed to come from one of the royal spires. Strange that such a creature would pursue us. Why? She pursues you because of me, because I heard of your operations in Briarcrest and I wanted to join your cause because it seems perhaps stronger to go together than for me to go alone. <laughs> perhaps there is a chance for you in the broken sky. Her Majesty will like this thinking. It reflects well on you. And what of this one, this drow? You say he did not seek us out. He was meeting with the drow, the poison agent, I believe. Yes, that's what he claims. He claims he has business of his own, personal matters. But he was quite adept. He snuck into the building, posed as one of our own, even convinced Calidus to give him keys to send him down. He even managed to trick me into offering, uh, locating the secret trap door. <laughs> Not like you to be taken by surprise. So, Drow! And he kind of steps on You can see now this guy is ripped. Like his muscles, like <laughs> underneath these scales, his biceps are probably the size of your like head. Like he's really ripped. Muscles on his muscles. Yeah, just, <laughs> you know, he's intimidating. He's seven foot tall. He looks down on you, something you're not used to because you're quite tall. He's just like, so, what do you say? What interests you, Drow? Power? Wealth? Oh. I can offer you both of these things. You are speaking my language, sir. <laughs> Excellent. I like mercenaries. There are no morals to worry about. There are no causes. You fight for gold, and gold I can give you. Hmm. Well, you must be tested, of course. We will put you on a small errand for us. If you do well, you will be initiated. You will be given power. Power beyond what any army can offer you. And you can see he has one of these brands, but his is actually burnt into his scales. And he clenches his fist and lightning just crackles down his arm. And you can see like it starts to crackle in his mouth. He's just like, I have always had an affinity with the storms, but with Her Majesty's power, I am their master. Very well, send them to the barracks. We will call on them. Victoria, I leave you in their charge. I leave you them in your charge. Can I just ask as Kim, mm -hmm. would Juto know the kind of things like the chromats and the metallics? Would she know? If she D the Dragonborns didn't ever really discuss their personal matters with you. Mm. Uh, you maybe might have heard the terms, but you don't know what they mean. Mm -hmm. So. I'm guessing I have no idea what he's talking about. Okay, no, almost anybody except Kim or a very like Cam because he's a bard. He may have heard stories. Very little information comes out of the Kingdom of Bressaris. Very little. They're very uh, insular. They don't really talk about it much. Um, but yeah, that's it. So uh, you are basically, unless you want to say anything else, you are led away, mm -hmm. uh, taken out. I was going to say if you want to mm -hmm. say anything more. You got to think. What's the time cap? Just because I don't have my phone. Uh, it is ten past eight. Oh, ten past. Okay. Well, anything you want to do, just quickly, and then we can wrap things up. The companions who are with me, they may prove useful as well. The gnome, as we mentioned, has knowledge on the lightfall and perhaps how to deal with Korak's weapon. And the elf has a meeting with Korak, a royal appointment, a the... direct opportunity to meet with him. Hmm. This is interesting. Victoria's just like, they did attack me, Varesh. I'm not sure we can entirely trust They them. panicked. And if she goes to that meeting, she needs to go unharmed. Hmm. And he seems to like look at you with a cold intelligence. Victoria, didn't you say that this drow could shift forms? Perhaps we show him this elf. She can still keep her appointment but we have a powerful agent by Korak's side. He will not have her knowledge. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. And with that, we're going to end tonight's session right there. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Serious stuff! <laughs>
Holy moly! It's <laughs> nice knowing you guys. Oh, please. Don't and there's worry. a week off now. You're not well. dead. And it's a week off. Oh, my. Oh, Cap! It's a week off. Yeah. What happened? Two weeks, haven't we? And you're away. Well, I think we can still carry on this event um, net while you're away. Because I think I've got something planned for you guys that should be okay. Um, You'll have to play a Laura. I will. I think we'll be all right. I don't think I should have to play her that much. I've got an idea. Uh, and you'll be here. Yeah, I'll be so here. We'll be here for that. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys need to shoot off, um, please feel free. I'm happy to do donations. Oh, so fine. if you want to shoot off, I'll stick around. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Hopefully, you enjoyed that rather intense <laughs> second half. Oh, that was amazing. Amazing. Shit. Oh man, I'm that Dragonborn. I'm really glad that you get to meet like some of these characters because Varesh is a character who's obviously been you've heard talking about, and I've had planned about what he's doing and stuff. So it's kind of cool that you get there. And man, yeah, did not expect some of this stuff. So just so a point of reference. Dragonborn yeah. is that that yeah, that's bastard? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, that's that, that cobalt. No, 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 no. Is it not? No. Okay. Let me show you a dragonborn. So, I because I realise that it's kind of hard to describe these like. guys. Um, I funny. know from Cliff Rock. Yeah, yeah, you know from Tiberius Stormwind. Oh, no, hello. From Jacobin. Like, oh, I've like, oh, something before I speak, but we can do the donations and stuff. So it's not great, but like they kind of look like this. Oh right, okay. They're very draconic, very angry dragon face. Yeah, yeah. This is like more of a wizardy one. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen actually. Yeah. So I won't show you guys because it will look crap, but yeah. Just trying to think. No, there's no any other good pictures. I will put one up on my Twitter. If I can find a good one for uh, an uh, idea of Varesh. Look up Tiberius Stormwind and imagine it Tiberius blue. Stormwind! He's so blue, good. but also, like, Tiberius blue. was a scrawny sorcerer. This guy is. He's like Conan. He's like Dwayne Johnson. Uh, yeah. You know. On steroids. On, yeah, well, no. Dwayne, like jo no, Dwayne Johnson doesn't need steroids. He just looks like the freaking rock. Like, did you see him in Hercules? Like, he that level of build. I know, he was just like hardcore working out. No, don't, don't you make me think badly of Hong Plane. Oh, Dwayne. <laughs> no, he's playing Black Adam in Shazam. Yeah, yeah. Shazam. Right, uh, Donations, you want to flip that table round? Thank you, guys. Can I grab my mini? Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, one's on the table. Yeah. Well, that was fun. Ugh. Acting. T-Y, right. Woo! So, should we do Kim, Kath, me, Katie, Matt? Boom. We'll get it done. Nightjar, here's 500 of the Queen's shiniest pennies for my favourite people. <laughs> Don't spend it all at once now. Uh, thank you for picking me up after every awful week and getting me ready to face another. Love you guys. Kiss, kiss. Kiss, kiss. Yay. Hydrons says, Hello, High Rollers. I wanted to say thanks for the awesome streams. I'm staying up until 6am Australian time uh, to watch you guys. Oh, also, has anyone noticed how Cam is essentially Pike and Scanlan's kid? <laughs> anyone? That's Critical Role, since okay. the other D&D stream. I've watched the episode one so far. So yeah, I, watch oh, more. I love it's really good. Pike so much. Pike and Scanlan. She's like an angel. Pike and Scanlan, OTP. Just saying, just saying, <laughs> OTP. Uh, Grog's my favourite. <laughs> Grog's great. Grog's uh, right, so, uh, Nintendoofus. Hi, Rollers. Looking forward to Kath joining you guys, especially as a wild magic sorcerer. My halfling, Jerick Fizzlebang, has already fire fireballed himself and it's only been the second session, so looking forward to the weird, wacky, wild, and wonderful surges. Well, we had a couple of the good ones. Nothing, like, nothing bad happened, though. Nothing no, damaging. Nothing super bad, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> G Duke Bites found a coffee can literally full of loose coffee can coffee can literally full of loose change this weekend. Imagine me cackling as I hand this to you. <laughs> Quarters, dimes, and nickels. Nice. Thank you very much. Thanks. Excuse me. Oh, excuse uh, me. Modfather nine eight nine has donated, but no message. No message. And either. Cloud Sora. So despite living in MA, I didn't manage to see Trot or Chris Perkins. At least I have you guys to cheer me up today. This year has been the worst of my life, and you guys have made it bearable. Long post on Reddit later. Tired. I've been up all night. Well, oh, dear. Improve for you. Sora. Also, I don't think the guys have been at packs too much. So. No. Uh, Lord XFS. Good Sunday, Yogs and Calf. I hope you have a good game. I also hope you'll answer my letter, Kim. At Kappa Death Booty Death Love. Uh, if I have your letter, sure. But I have a really. You pretty much problem. replied to most of them. I don't don't know. You, so. There's still oh, really? like forty letters in that mm. box. <laughs> Have fun with that! Ah. Sammy T291 says, As soon as I saw Calf, I realised Steve needs to make a quick image of Terps, Mark and Calf 
with the titles of 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0, <laughs> respectively. Please make this happen. <laughs> I like how, by the way, for Couch Potatoes, we actually have like in animated versions of ourselves. Yeah. Because we are so similar, they've had to give they had to give me my baseball cap just so that they look slightly <laughs> oh, different. Because we because we have beard, glasses, similar haircut, yeah. and we're very similar build and facial shape. So That's I had to have a hat. Uh, Wub Wub 69 uh, Rip, I work Saturdays Guess I have to wait for the VOD then Yeah, unfortunately you'll have to join those that can't watch the Sunday streams But it will only be for a short time It's only for a, a temporary period uh, Sophie Do, I actually get to watch live for once Because I've got a day off work So I had to donate just to let you know how much I love the show It's a serious highlight of my week And welcome to Kath who is going to be awesome I'm sure <laughs> Yeah He was Awesome um, for the DM. <laughs> Anko Kudion. Uh, can't watch live today at a golden wedding anniversary. Oh, but thanks for the donation. Enjoy. Uh, Bango's TNT. So now I have my uh, favourite people, minus the one because Chuck's not there, gathered in one room. I have tea, I have biscuits, I have my dog, and most of all, my computer is back from repairs. Life is good. Life is good! That is a good life. It's good. Almost went a little bit actually accurate there at the start. <laughs> I'm a lost out, don't you worry. How, hey, was it just, how do you want to do this? That's quite the name. How hey, do you want to do this? Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you, as without High Rollers, I wouldn't have realised how amazing D&D is and would never have discovered Critical Role. I hope this donation helps. You're all so amazing. Thank you very much. How do you want to do this? Great name. Uh, me, uh, Kikaldegren. Hey guys, me and my friends are thinking about playing D and D with me as a DM. I'm not up to date with this series, so I won't watch tonight. Also, can Kim teach? Can Cam yeah. teach me the look? I'm 23 year old male who has never had a girlfriend. I'm willing to try anything. Don't try anything. Just don't ask time. Chris Just for small advice. Don't <laughs> smolder. Just says his girlfriend of three and a half years. Just be yourself, man, <laughs> and don't worry about it. That's the most important thing. Like, don't if you don't, if you worry about it, about it then as yeah, just yeah. don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, Dragosphere, hey guys, loving the stream, been watching since the beginning and have been inspired to DM an upcoming game for the first time. Some have interest in making some custom classes. Any suggestions to how to approach this? For example, Final Fantasy Dragon Class? Uh, Dragoon. 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 My advice, don't try and make custom classes right away. It is pretty difficult and it's really hard to balance. Instead, go on something like dmsguild.com, try and find a similar looking class and maybe just reflavor it or reskin it and do it that way. The other one I'd go with is for a Dragoon, Basically, let them take like a pole arm and make them go fight a battle master because that will give them loads of cool abilities. Or even Eldritch Knight would work really well. So try that maybe, rather than doing the custom class because it's really hard. Even I've not tried it yet because it's really intimidating. Uh, M third, hello. Thanks for the amazing stream. Mark is so good at running these games. He's amazing. Can you play any race in D and D? Could you be a harpy or an orc or something like that if you wanted? Or is it limited? No, you can pretty much play whatever you want. You just have to agree with your DM. You might need to adjust stats. They might need yeah. to go online and find something else. But yeah, there's no like. You, if you want to be a harpy, be a harpy. You just need to have adjusted stats. You just need stats. to adjust things. Yeah, yeah, because like the problem is, is a lot of the monsters aren't built to be player races, so they're not balanced. But it doesn't take that much to retweet them. So. Brendan Flexington, love you guys, can't wait for the performance. We'll be donating a bigger amount within the next few weeks. Kim Juto is awesome, thank you. Uh, also guys, Mark is a fair DM compared to ours who decided to make us fight a Hydra. <laughs> well no, I just, they've not got to that level yet where I'm gonna make them fight Hydras. Um, Sammy T291 says, hoping Loban's last name is Oldwell. No, it's not. It's Trapped If that passes over your head, shame on you all. P.S. Excited for Game of Thrones on Monday? Question no, mark. Not really. no, I don't know. I haven't no. watched it. I don't know. <laughs> like, I like how all of us are like, I stopped watching it. Same. Like, I, I, watching did, it. I did watch it, but it was very delayed. And it was kind of like, I watched it because Chris watched it and I didn't really care because okay. I don't too really much care. sexual violence. Wigs right? and boobies. Yeah. It's I'm, just, I'm, uh, yeah, honestly, like, I'm the same. Like, I just don't, I'm actually watching more anime again, which makes me feel really weird. And I'm old. just watching a load of D&D. No. One Punch! You watch One Punch Man, so I don't watch One Punch so Man. And Once Upon a Time, because I'm a little Disney nerd <laughs> who loves it. I'm watching House of Cards. Matters. Both the British original and the American new one. Frank yeah, Underwood. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Uh, is it me? Uh, no, I think that was Cam. Uh, it was Cam, so it's me. Torrey Horn, thanks guys for providing my regular D and D fix. Not being able to play recently because my players are too busy. Also, thanks for giving me the confidence DM. No problem, you can do it. No problem. No problem. Dimitri Sev, no problem. <laughs> 
Uh, someone willing to donate says, so I haven't really been able to catch High Rollers live before, but I finally got a character. You got me into D&D, and I'm currently working on a character, a human bard, but rather than play music, he's a playwright slash actor who uses a quill as a focus. That's really cool. That's cool. I like it. Yeah, it's a good idea. Uh, Bango's TNT. This is a donation for those that can't donate but want to. Yay, High Rollers, we love you. We watch it religiously, either live or on YouTube, but we all need it like we need air to breathe. I just want to give a shout out to Bango's TNT because he does that every, every week. He yeah. donates for people that yeah. can't yeah. donate, and that's really freaking awesome. Thank it's you, lovely. Man. Thank that's you. Amazing. Oh. Uh, and speaking of another <laughs> regular, we got DVD01 CD01 <laughs> with another anonymous donation. Thank you very much. And Flying Taco Cats. Uh, nice, after nice watching Cat play Rust, I'm even more excited oh, about his stream. Thank, so thankful this gnome seems to have a nice deep voice. No bleeding ears for us! Yeah. Um, so oh, you man. have become a terror on the Yogg's Rust server. Like, like well, you have, you've, you've become the anti Pyrian force. Hashtag Pyrian shot first. That's, that's <laughs> all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm just quite uh, happy. I've got my little beach villa, and I sit in the corner of the map, and I don't have any trouble, and nobody, t like, nobody bothers you? me. Yeah, like, right. we just, I just have a little villa, I just and I have nice. a good time, and yeah. I build stuff, and it's lovely. It's such a a fun game though. It is really it's fun. Going really I must well. admit, like, I really enjoyed it. And Barry's Barry, done an amazing job. Yeah. Good job, Barry. Barry good great job. work with the server. Uh, Yin Yanger. Uh, hey, High Rollers. Enjoying having Kath in the group. Thanks, buddy. Great choice for a name, Kath. Wild Mage with the name Trogdor. Trogdor, sorry. He will definitely be burninating his enemies. <laughs> <laughs> burninating the burninators. So yeah, good. keep up the good work. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Georgina3101. First Nat 20 of the evening. Good luck to you, Juto. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't know, I don't feel lucky right now. <laughs> no, I, feel, I don't. I, don't. I feel good. You all felt so I good after good. that first combat encounter. You were like, yeah! <laughs> yeah! yeah! And then these fucking two. I regret <laughs> not going back <laughs> out the trapdoor. I, I regret, regret you, like, firing off. I was like, we could talk. You know, we could talk. You know, we could talk about this. You want to talk. You're the only one that wants to. That was, that was so much She damage. was clearly OP! <laughs> clearly! She was. If, if it wasn't a half uh, damage, like, I think everyone would have died. Yeah, we would have died. Well, well, so, just as a point, by the way, right? Yeah, they would have all, Just yeah. to make a point, that was... She is... Yeah, she's a spellcaster. Mm. She's a fifth-level spellcaster, right? In terms of combat, one fifth-level caster against four of you is a fair fight. Mm. That's actually an easy encounter in theory. But she would have taken both of those down. Yeah. And that's yeah. the problem with the She line would line have taken me down, but I would have had two HP. Also, I rolled really high on that lightning bolt damage. Like I was yeah. I rolled like at least five sixes out of eight. So Jesus. I rolled really well. But yeah, like this is now this is the point, is up until now you've not had to deal with really powerful spellcasters. Mm. Yep. They are scary as frick. Yeah. She <laughs> can paralyze you she paralyzed you, she can lightning bolt, oh, she can man. heal. Well, that's why I was just like, I no, yeah. no, done. Bye then. Part, peace. <laughs> no dying, please. Peace, man. Peace. But, yeah, but if you had got the jump on her, you would have killed her easily. She didn't have that many hit points. Like, you knew you said you only did four damage. That's a sizable chunk of her hit points. So, uh, <laughs> anyway, back to the donations. I just wanted to put that out there before people get mad at me, going, Mark's so unfair, no enemies are too powerful. It's like, nope, nope. It's just the dice. It's just the dice. It's just the way the dice roll. <laughs> I request I someone. Now. I request for Mark to have a dedicated dice roller so that he doesn't fucking touch the dice. <laughs> I'm just gonna roll forty six and see what I get. Oh, that's not too bad. That's like eleven. 12 points damage on 46. Bad okay. ones off Yeah, game. not 30. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway. Uh, a new flame? Hey all, just wanted to show some support for Kath this episode, but I've been absolutely loving High Rollers, especially the Juto Resurrection story arc. Mark's an amazing DM with his voices and impressions. Definitely staying tuned for more. <laughs> uh, Tuna. Bumblebee Tuna. <laughs> Nina's artwork is amazing as per usual. Kaf's character kind of looks like Dr. Robotnik's steampunk cousin. Yeah. And I, I thought that. Cool. I thought he really? looked like Robotnik oh, in yeah. the face. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Um, also, I caught up on the Q&A stream. That was great to listen to all of your DM secrets. It was really helpful and performative. Mm. Kim? Jedi Slayer. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Accurate. Hey guys, loving the stream. I've been laying hints about D&D &D a while in my group and I finally piqued their interest enough uh, to want to try it out. What do you recommend for starting out? Books, campaign, dice and whatnot. We have two to three players. Uh, start a set. Go on Amazon. D&D &D 5th edition starter box. Perfect thing to run off. It does pre-generated characters, gives you an adventure, dice, everything you need except pencils and, and rubbers. Do that. Maybe pick up the player's handbook as a supplement so you can make your own characters and just have more things about rules and spells and everything else. Do that, see how you get on, then invest in things like Monster Manual and Dungeon Master Guide and build your own campaigns. But start a box, really, really good, can't recommend it enough. 
Ben020295 says, Kicking myself that I forgot about the stream and ended up being here 40 minutes late. We'll have to watch the archive video in the week. Yep, dog's live. Uh, still wanted to drop by for my weekly £10 donation, though. If Kim gets stuck on my username again, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's that's the regular thing now. Thank you very much, Ben. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Draz, our boy. Draz X2. You. Thanks, Kim, for introducing Caf and his content. Seriously, this guy, seeing his XCOM when you will you all turn into a potted plant. <laughs> uh, great stream, guys. Never a dull weekend with you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Draz is a really lovely guy. Uh, Daza. Hey, guys. I completely forgot about the stream planning my character for my very first game of D&D. Don't want to miss a second of the stream, let alone an hour, so I will watch the VOD in the morning instead of spoiling it for myself tonight. Good night. Good night. Thank Enjoy you it. Uh, Apple Schmapples. Juto reminds me of Granny Weatherwax. Mm. They're both incredibly grouchy heroes, whether they like it or not. Anyway, have some money. I, think you I, I can agree with that. I agree with that. Uh, Georgina3101, two weeks without combat and Shrell is first in danger. Perfect. Shrell <laughs> yeah. did great in that first game. He well. He's still up. Okay? He's still up. He's That's still the up. first fight episode that he stayed up. Yeah, I think it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to point Holy out shit. that Juto rushed in and put herself in front of him. Yeah, yeah. That's true. It did. Yeah. Very true. I would have talked my way out. Just the small touches. <laughs> yeah, but, but Juto's headstrong. As soon as she sees yeah. someone, oh, yeah. she's like, I'm there. True. Sammy T291, 40 minutes in and combat. Couldn't have been a better feel for Cam. Good job. Good job. Thanks very much. Uh, who Chiark? Uh, be, <coughs> be right that the only time I'm awake for these streams is when I'm behind on the story. Damn time zones. Thank Evandra, with an E, it's A, it's Avandra, uh, for VODs. Continuing to love you guys and your world so much. Have great. So being so uninterested in buying the player's handbook. Sorry, I really can't read these donations. I've gone from, from being so uninterested in D and D to buying the player's Thank handbook. Thank you. Kim. I, I am literally like I'm like this. I'm like, what does it say? <laughs> uh, I can't read this one better. Leonard Euler. Hey. Time for a question. If any of the party members can answer this on their own, I will exponentially increase my donation. Continue the statement. The derivative of any exponential function e to the x is y. Have you just guessed that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, I don't know. I'm not a maths guy. I can no. add up quickly. That's about it. Um, sorry, Leonard. Go on. Go. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Billy K. Uh, hey, guys. Haven't had a chance to donate yet. Loving the series. Mark, if you could give an ambiguous hint as to what may be coming in the future, since it's a while to the next one, what would you say? Keep up the amazing work, guys. Hashtag oh, Ron I've no idea. Yeah, I need yeah, to no figure idea. out. These, these guys have thrown me for a loop now. Um, <laughs> we got a week to... We're going to the Barracks. Dramatic. Barrack boys. I would say. Barrack Barrack boys. I'm going to go away for a week and be like... <laughs> Please don't kill me. Laura's still in the prison. I, I, will yeah. make, I will make this promise now. My, I would never try and kill a PC. Like, a PC would never be in serious danger if they're not here. Because I don't want you to die when you're not here. That would be the worst thing ever. I would literally be... I, I'd I, flip tables yeah, everywhere. I Laura will, died in prison. Yeah. But unless she starved to death because they <laughs> forgot about her. Yeah. <laughs> unless it is completely unavoidable, that will never happen. Okay. So, rest easy. Um... Kim. Be in an airport, just like uh, Laurel <laughs> Author. Like on your phone, like. <laughs> <laughs> Laurel Author. Hello once again. Sorry, tuned in a little wait, a little late, so I can't watch live. Update on Yan He. She got a uh, goddamn team killed by the idiot rogue who was taking pot shots at a pseudo dragon. Luckily, the resident uh, Tieflin cleric helped me up. D and D, everyone. Yay! Good old oh. pot killing rogue. Awesome. Hubiarch, donating again because I spelt my name wrong? <laughs> Please forgive me, it's 2.30 in the morning. And also because you guys are amazingly awesome and I love you to bits. You too, Kath. Thanks, buddy. Can't wait to see your character when I watch the VOD. P.S. Your recap was amazing. Love for all. Awesome. Yay. Thanks, buddy. Uh, Turbo Penguin 221 Hey, guys. Sorry this is not much, but the exchange rate is annoying. Anyway, Kath! <laughs> two minutes in and you started the first battle in two weeks. Love you and hope you can watch you more of your streams from Australia. Oh, the my. Switch to set oh, this. oh, my. Mate. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, Alinx Barfight plus Mark name somewhere Red Redwall Wall Abbey. Abbey. Oh Who my name? god! Like, that's Redwall Abbey. That's the books by Brian Jakes. Redwall Abbey. I don't know those books. Oh, you would love them, dude! Yeah. Like, you would. I've got all of them. They're like kids' books, but you could definitely read them as an adult. Oh, wait, um, Redwall. Yeah, Redwall. Redwall! Red with the mice and yeah, the badgers oh, okay. and like. Yeah, yeah. I know it. I it. Okay. Yeah. It's a good name. Uh, Hundo! 
copy the pasty. Wow. wow. Copy the pasty oh. hundo. Is it me? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's Matt's like, like oh. Keep being awesome. Keep up the bear puns. You guys are fantastic. Kim, will you please say, my name is Max? Well, especially because you did a, a mighty hundo. A mighty hundo. My name is Mix. <laughs> my name is Mix. Mi mix. My name is Mix. My name is Mix. What's Kim? your name, mate? Mine's also Mix, actually. <laughs> uh, chaotic good, not chaotic knob. I miss Cam. I made this joke for him. <laughs> okay. That's a good name. Oh, okay, um, there we go. Okay, I see. I, the, the name was the joke. Yeah, the name was the joke. I'm chaotic knob. Dumb. Nice observation from a friend here. Tremar Alif, you are taking more time than you should with your task from my first message. Leave <laughs> it too late and you will witness the consequences directly. Heed your time. I will be in contact again. Uh, don't need special work. Okay. Alright. There you go. Interesting. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mizzy Myth. Missed half of the stream. Apparently, there's a law that says I have to be sociable on my birthday. <laughs> oh, well, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Shitty after being around the family all day. Can I still have the hug you said you'd give me last week, Kim? I can really use it right now. Well, I think you can have a hug from everybody on your birthday. Hug. Hugs. Greasy hug. Greasy hug. Greasy, That's it. greasy hug. Oh, dear. Mm. oh. Wonder Brain. Working on more Malifaux. Hi, yep. Rollers. Laura will be a politician of the Miners and Steam Fitters Union who can shapeshift shape into a six limbed bear. Interesting. Malfo Cam is a street performer and Trell is the servant of a tyrant, Malfo's dark god like spirits. Uh, we've got 12, yeah. Trots, Trots in the chat. Trots in the chat. Trots in the chat. Woo woo woo. Cam killed, oh. we killed Cam. Sorry. Cam yeah, Cam's dead. GG. Dead. Uh, Shanticles. Wild magic. Yes. Can I get a couple of good lucks from you guys? I'm starting a new job on Monday and getting married the week after. Oh, wow. wow. Give me some luck next buddy. week. Have a great break, all. Uh, and Katie, have a nice time back home. Much love. Well, well good luck and enjoy good your uh, wedding as well. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And a new job. Wow, big change. Uh, Rom Rapara. Hey, Steve isn't a white haired gentleman? Played by Gigax? Recently Gax. lived in America? Haven't seen a fellow around lately and he was. Taking some kind of computer degree. This seems the sort of thing that he would suddenly appear doing. No? No. <laughs> no. There you go. Our Steve's also, from Wales. Yeah, our Steve's from Wales. <laughs> <laughs> also, Gygax is the guy who invented D&D. Well, one of the guys that did it, so learn your roots. Uh -huh. Do what okay. I want, mate. Do what I want, mate. Exhibiti says, Hey guys, wanted to drop some coin for your amazing work with D&D. Never thought I would get into this as much as I would and hope to see this go for a while. You guys are great. P.S. Missing the Mad Hatter Trot. Well, he's in chat right he's now. Right. Yeah. So, uh, donation from Theron Leodon. Thank you very much. And then, uh, with no message. And then, K. Katness. Um, is an Aussie, I'm going to say, great Aussie accents you have there. Yeah, I see? give you the all advantage rolls for that, but since I can't, I'll just have to make more art for you all. See what I mean? Actually, actually accurate. accurate. Yes. Yeah. See, see? you were taking the piss, mate. No, we've got an actual Australian saying they're actually accurate. <laughs> actually accurate. John Mange, <laughs> as we have seen on Kath's Rust stream, stealth is not his style. Oh. Loving the stream, though. <laughs> Keep it up, folks. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, times. Harassed civil servant. I really should be working, but have been far too sidetracked laughing at tonight's stream and said, wonder if my boss will accept, got distracted by magical pink basset hound as an excuse for missing my <laughs> <laughs> That basset hound. Amazing. That was oh so my. good. That is literally that a dog so ate my homework kind of excuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, up 657416. Oh, that was string. horrific, oh. Mark. Yeah, that's got a cricky neck. He just oh. cracked oh, pop, 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 his neck. Pop, pop, pop. Oh. Hopefully the whole chat. Did you not hear that? Mm. No. Oh, no, it was horrible. horrible. It, was really it was really gross. Yeah. <laughs> uh, love this stream. Missed it last week due to work, so have some of the money from that overtime. Bought the starter set, now just need to find someone uh, to play with. How dare friends have lives? <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's the, that's the hardest bit about D&D. It's not the rules, it's not anything else. It's just trying to find people to play with that can do it on a regular basis. Sammy T two nine. You're getting all of Sammy's. Again. I like how the fact that every week I got somebody Sammy's gets last week. Sammy. Yeah. You had him the, the week before. Mm. I think he's like competing for the most donations in one stream here. Hope you enjoyed your ginger biscuits, Matt. I need to go get some from the shop in my village. Any Ugh. particular brand I should look out for? Aha! Uh -huh. I don't know. These, these are the dog biscuits. The, yeah. the cheap dog biscuits. They do brand. literally these look are, these, dog are, these are crude Norton. I think we've got to give them. <laughs> Uh, Tanath, 
thanks again for another entertaining session. I'm loving following your adventure. This week, a donation honor of a scary trail and pink basset hound. Hashtag roll, for sun roll on Sunday. Except we'll have to change that into roll on Saturday for a while, won't we? Yeah. I think we'll still use roll on Sunday, just because it will get confusing. <laughs> roll on Sunday on Saturday. <laughs> with, the, with the last bit. Roll not on the weekend. Hashtag. Yeah. No. I don't know. <laughs> Is it me? Yeah. For Jackie oh, Vex. For Jackie Vex, loving calf's gnome Thanks, might uh, maybe bring him back a few more times. Would be awesome. Keep up the good work. Also, maybe one day you'll pronounce my name right. Sorry. <laughs> Jackie Vex. Uh, Bangers Sorry. TNT again. Uh, thank you for making me laugh today. I needed it. You might no as well problem. read Bam's next one as well. Um, oh, and uh, don't know if you made it through last time. So. Thank you, Mods in chat. Thank you, Steve. Also visit Steve's Bandcamp page and buy his music. <laughs> oh, we're going to do a thing for that in a minute. Yeah. And thank you, High Rollers, for the hours of entertainment. Blood for the Bam God. So I was going to I was going to mention it at the very end, but it's probably worthwhile mentioning now. The soundtrack that Steve has made for High Rollers, which is something like twenty, like it's a lot of tracks basically. It's like with everyone's individual themes and loads of stuff, is really going cool. to be sold. So you will be able to buy it. They're just sorting out the final details. We'll make sure we put that heavily advertise it and link it in chat and it'll go on Twitter and everything. But you will be able to buy the soundtrack very soon. It will go directly into supporting Steve and the Yogs. So definitely pick yeah. it up. It will be really great. Yay! Um, X Sky High, I love the Sorcerer's uh, random effects thing. I'm really going to miss you guys next week. I hope you have a good relaxing break. Yeah. Wild Magic's really fun. Brosif Starchin says, just a couple of quid as thanks for the entertainment. I think I forgot to do it last week. Sorry. But anyway, a quick question for Kath. What is it like to go from being a spectator to being part of the spectacle? Oh, it's amazing. Cool. I'm living the dream, guys. I'm living the dream. It's incredible. There you go. <laughs> Even if Juto does hate your character. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Jackie Vex again. Wow, that, this just got interesting. I'm enjoying this week way too much. Love Trell and his unpredictability. I know, right? Jeez. Hey, it's our oh. favourite comic book artist with a big donut. What is this? Hey. Hey. What is this? Oh, man. Oh, my God. You already really do an amazing comic. <laughs> yeah. She's awesome. I love you, Amberverse. Oh man, what a session. So glad I could catch this live. Though I almost slept through my 4 a.m. alarm. So worth it. High rollers is better than sleep anyway. Love you guys. Oh, thank, <laughs> thank you for you. staying awake to watch it. Mm, That's crazy. As well. I know. Thank you so much. Go uh, and check out the comic. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> no, you should. Um, High Rollers D and D comic is it High, high No, it's High Rollers Comic dot And that's all by Amberverse. It's amazing. Mm. Yeah. There it is. Uh, Candid Arachnid, uh, I'm way behind on schoolwork, so can't watch live tonight. I'll catch up when I can. Uh, don't read this bit. Okay, that's fine. Oh, oh don't worry don't. about it. Yeah, it's not a problem. It's not a problem. Um, Dancing on fire. This story is shaping beautifully. <laughs> Loving every episode. <laughs> beautifully. <laughs> Hey, look who you get again. Another Sammy T291. Dude, you're insane. Um, but a good insane. Yeah. How to explain this all to Cam? Ah, uh, he doesn't need to know. <laughs> he won't care. Gothic Kitty 1313. Hey all, oh my god, this session has got to be one of the best yet. So much drama. Kath, you did awesome. Well Thank done. You. It'll be interesting what happens next session. I can't wait. Lots of love. Enjoy the rest next week. Kim, let her arrive. Thank you, big heart. Thank Yay. you very much. Uh, all alone. Ola Renf donated, um, and also Dras Calder says, Gotta love how Mark channels the chaos god of players so well. Mark, in case you're still interested, I've been checking in the Ravenloft 3rd edition campaign setting, and they're quite easy to translate to 5th. There you go, top bands. Uh, Angelus Lucius, uh, what an episode, what a cliffhanger. Great job, guys, can't wait for the next one. Yeah, Not definitely. Me. Fluxy Penguin, this is my first time donating and I'm mostly speechless because holy wowzers, what an episode and what an ending. I'm so worried for Alora, the small so elf bad. must be kept safe and protected in a roll of bubble so, wrap and not tortured. So small! So small! So small, so small. So small and precious! <laughs> <laughs> and the Bristolator says, Hey, High Rollers, this is one of the best episodes. Up there with Juto's death and rebirth. Is it canon that Kaf is Trot's father's brother's nephew's cousin's former roommate who is street secretly Australian? <laughs> um, well, maybe. 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 It's a mystery to be discovered. <laughs> thank you all so much for your amazing donations. Thank yeah, you. Really thank appreciate you guys. it, guys. Thank you for all the support as well. Um, as I said, we're not here next week. It is going to be brief while we've got Insomnia Scotland on. There will be another stream. You're busy. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately so I can't you, do it, but yeah. It might be me doing something, we'll figure it out. But yeah. DM if you're in the, yeah, if probably. you're at Insomnia Scotland and you see me or Chris, say hi. Definitely. Because we are always happy to meet you. Yeah. 
definitely. And we will see you, not next week, but the week after, for more High Rollers and to see the conclusion of the events put into motion the today. The exciting conclusion of the the small precious one. <laughs> small, it's so small. I right. tried, mate. Let's all bang. Bye. Bye, mate. Bye. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.